Hey, welcome to You Won't Hate It, where we look at life through the lens of pastors at the length of a cigar. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. I'm Joe. I almost forgot the order. I was about to go in front of you. I <laughs> wasn't sure. All right. So, uh, fun this stuff is, happening this here. This is pretty exciting. This Do you cool. think mine is black or blue? Uh, it's oh, like purple. You know what? I it is like a purple. dark, dark blue, right? Purple? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's so it's not black. Yours. No, mine's the black one. I'm teal. Uh, Power Rangers. Yeah, I was just realizing it's got a shade. This so, is super fun. This really, is like one of really my fun, things. super awesome story. So Clay Hall, who's a pastor out of Kentucky, uh, has a cigar company, um, and it's called 1689 Cigars, and basically reached out, and I thought it was a lie. <laughs> He's like, hey, saw your podcast, and was wondering if you guys would review some of our cigars. And I was like, uh, yeah, if this is real, like, cause you know, how did you respond? I, I, I got it right here, but I'm sure I was like, that'd be awesome. But I looked it up. I'm like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I like, wasn't sure if it was real. Yeah. He's like, cool. What's the address? I'll send you some. So I sent my home address, which my wife loved. She's like, did you send it? Do you given her address? Up? It does seem like a big mistake. It was a mistake. Yeah. I was worried if somebody's sending cigars, we weren't going to get them here. So anyways, we're well, not lighting them yet. I'm so uh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Light them. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Light it. Okay. So anyways, so here we are right now. We have the four cigars from 16 cigars we're going to be reviewing them all day we'll talk a little bit about the cigar and about their mission uh josh can tell us right now a little bit about their mission is and we'll chat about it and then we'll refer back to these and we all have different ones so uh josh why don't you start with what's what's the mission of 1689 cigars yeah at 18 at 1689 cigars 39 to 55 percent of every cigar sold supports reformed cigars whose whose dual mission is a to employ uh those in need in nicaragua who would otherwise be uh dependent on handouts and bees support indigenous Nicaraguan church pastors and planters. And you keep getting, you keep getting so close. uh, No, uh, Telemundo. Every time you say you're like, To support the work in Nicaragua. I'm like, geez, he's, he's really our, laying hard on the Nicaragua. That was our old, uh, was our old youth you, pastor. Wh- Amber how else would you say it? Flores. Nicaragua. Yeah. Is that not how you say it? Because when I went to Nicaragua. <laughs> uh, uh, Josh, why don't you look up a little bit about the cigars? Let's hear a so little bit about So this is pretty fun. One. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, was it Dale? I'm sorry. It was Hall. Cliff Clay. Hall. Clay. Clay Aiken. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clay... I'm curious. You just said he was a pastor. I don't think I knew he was a pastor. Yeah, and the other guy that I saw. At a church or a pastor in terms of ministry? No, he's a pastor at a church. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you remember uh, the name of the church? uh, I has got it right here because I'm just looking at his uh, profile. Uh, So, yep, his church at Pastor at Oak Grove Baptist Church. Oh, my gosh. I used to do ministry and stay at a church in Pismo called Oak Grove. Oak Grove. Oh, it was Oak Park. Oak okay. Park Christian Church. Oh, wow. It just made me think. I was like, oh, it's the same name. Um, but this is super fun. So I want to hear. And just so you know, uh, people who are watching this, uh, we are not going to be talking about cigars the whole time. We will reference back to them yeah. because a cigar, for those that don't know, it changes flavor throughout the cigar as the oils heat up. So the first, like, roughly inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch, uh, is usually like the harshest part of the cigar. And so we will... Uh, give our first impressions, but we're gonna we're just gonna talk a little, not just a, a lot, bit. because yes. there is some incredibly important stuff that I do want to get to. Yeah, uh, we just had Valentine's Day, which I just found out yesterday. On Valentine's Day, is a satanic holiday, and that we're all going to hell if you celebrate it. I actually cool. did watch a video you know. on that exact Glad topic. I didn't know that. Uh, oh. But mainly is the, a ton of controversy over the. He gets uh, us he videos. He gets us videos from the Super Bowl ads from the from a you know, a, we're we're gonna get into all that kind of Basically stuff. Basically, everybody hated it, the, yeah. the both sides. But we have a different take. So we're gonna talk about that because it's a take. We have a take. We've been talking about it since the Super Bowl, and we have a take that I have not heard yet online from from a Christian, especially, yeah. but truthfully, anyone online, I have not heard. Yeah. What we're going to say Anybody with a platform, I bet other believers are saying these things, but nobody at the platform is saying this. Yeah, I haven't heard it. So we're going to take our massive platform. Yep. Well, well, we got us this cigar review. That's how this happened. You know, it's funny. I've never felt more important in my life. I love it. I right. on my YouTube channel, I have like six sponsors that I've had. Yeah, this feels better. Oh, it's this, awesome. This feels real good. And he yeah. lost those sponsors. This, that's right. <laughs> and I'm canceled. Uh, <laughs> all right, Josh, grab any of the cigars. Talk. It's they're clever. Yeah. So obviously, uh, what did you say the band says? Uh, um, right on there. We preach Christ and Him crucified. We preach Christ and Him crucified. Right on the cigar band. This Pretty one cool. says, "The whole gospel." Oh. 
Do you have Calvin? Is contained in Christ. Do you have the John Calvin? Story? I have the John Calvin. Okay, we all have the Spurgeon. The Spurgeon. So yeah. it's, I wonder if that's a quote from Spurgeon. I don't know. Wait, wait. Do you mean John the Calvin? Verse? The Bible verse? Like, that goes, it's a, <laughs> no, Joe said that. That wait. wasn't the Bible. What? That's an old joke. What does it yeah. say on there again? We preach Christ in Him crucified. Oh yeah, yeah that was definitely that's a Bible Paul. verse. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Paul. By the Charles. way, I follow, Paul doesn't say we. He says I follow I, them on Instagram so now, and they actually have some fun uh, posts. Oh, yeah, they do a bunch of cool stuff. How cigars and Spurgeon and Calvin. It, it's pretty interesting, actually. So starting off is the uh, the blue band is the Chief of Sinners Rum Infusion, ironically given to me. Oh. this is a full bodied Maduro. No, made even. I, that's not. That's the rum infused one. You're not reading the right one. Is, which that's one is the have? fifth cigar that we don't have. Huh. Yeah, huh. no, that's a great noise. I actually oh. like when that happens. Well, why like Josh figures stuff out? Huh. First impression: the the band on it is yeah, they're great. beautiful. Yeah, ah, very this well is done. the Spurgeon Cigars Blue Label Maduro Lica Number One. Numero and Uno. It is. Uh, looks like it has. I'll just read it. It's a very brief description. Full yeah, body Maduro, good for nice smoke in your study or hanging out with the Brotherhood. Uh, neither of those are happening right now. These, these cigars bring remembrance to the late prince of preachers, Charles Spurgeon. If you like a cloud of good smoke and the gospel. Okay, I don't know about the blend. So that's nice. Okay, the, the that's late okay. prince of preachers. It's a great... I've it's never heard that. Nice. Prince of preachers. Yeah. yeah. Details. Kind of tab. How do you like it so far? I know this is right off the foot, so there's not much yet, but what's your Off initial? the foot? Maduro? Not bad. I just wish I knew what the blend was. Yep. Okay. So, uh, keep going. What do you got? So I've got a yeah. Just used to go in order. Mine actually isn't. This has a lot of flavor for Connecticut. I'm actually surprised it? by it. I think it's got a little bit of white pepper going on in there, so I think that's how they balance it a little bit. Okay. Um, let's. Here's what I'm realizing we have to do. Uh, clay. Uh, we need. We here's because here's what we need. We need to all be smoking the same cigar. Yeah. Oh, we we'll buy them. I'm not saying he needs to send them to us, but the truth is, because I'm thinking, interesting. But all you know, I'm tasting this. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what you're tasting. Right. So it's kind of it's difficult because I want to be all smoking the same cigar so right. that we can talk through them. So I like that. Uh, Clay, we'll need to we'll need to buy. Just we'll start one at a time. Like just yeah, buy buy. I, I, we'll reach out or uh, I'll I'll shoot you a, a an email, and I think what we'll do is we'll just get a. Uh, We'll get a four pack, maybe a five pack of each, because he yeah. sells them in five packs. Fiver right? of each, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'll do a fiver of each, and then I'll just keep him in my humidor, and no. then we'll smoke through them. Because, because mine, I and this is why I, I don't want to say it. It's surprisingly good right off the foot, right? And I'm like, but you don't know that, right? Yours you know is the I mean? John Calvin Habano cigar. Yeah, it's the Habano, but yeah. it's a, it's got a Connecticut wrapper, right? And the Habano, just in reference to the seed, could be from Havana. Yeah, sure. I'm guessing it's the fill. Yeah, yeah, could or be. maybe I don't know. Or binder. What's um, mine? Yours is the Black Label uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and yeah, we'll have to contact him for more details about the blends. Yeah, I'm assuming uh, it's probably some Nicaragua. Nic but Nicaragua. I'm just They're telling probably you on there, but I'm enjoying mine. Oh uh, yeah, so. Good. No. And this is and why it's irritating because I'm like, it's got a it's got a really interesting, good flavor right off the foot, which must, is that must be nice. I know. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, so does mine. I but want, you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I just want I so want to know about interesting. it. Interesting for oh yeah, go ahead, no, please. For Floyd's, his is the teal label, Maduro Liga number three. Box press. We skipped number two. Yeah, what happened mm. to number two? I don't know. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Uh, so these guys are raising money. Yeah, I was going to say this is fun for you know for someone else for other causes, right? So they're they're selling cigars. They're doing all this for, to benefit others, right? That's the mission. Uh, I think there's a question on there about what is it? What organization, nonprofit organization, would you work for for free, just yeah. in your spare time? Is that what is that what the question says? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's that. Oh, basically, it's farther if down you, below. If you had yeah. to pick. If you had to pick a not-for-profit, uh, some sort of, or, you know, whatever it is, you had to pick an organization or a cause to get behind, and it can't be one that you make up. Like, I would, right. you know, make aircraft right. for, I don't know. Uh, what would that be? Like, what's an organization that you... And it's you, in your spare time. You know, exactly. it's like you work your regular job, and then yeah. when you have spare time, you're working for this. And don't make SoulCon, because we know that's what you do. Oh, I, kinda, uh, I mean, I do that. That's it's true. I do that. Yeah. You, you don't do, do that. that. I don't. Yeah. So it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what would it be? What Besides would be the... Soulcon, so because you already are doing that with Soulcon. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, Ryan, you've worked a lot of different organizations. Yeah, a ton of nonprofits. Honestly, it'd be compassion for me. 
I think I, I think just the idea of helping kids, mm. Compassion International. I don't know why that's that that seems worth my time. Yeah. Uh, to be like, how can I help in any way possible to help yeah. kids get sponsored? So, gospel fed education. I mean, it's every shelter, everything you think of, to help kids around the world. So. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of what. So lately, I'm just really hoping our connection to Compassion doesn't see this. It's like you do it for free. <laughs> oh, interesting! Oh my gosh, let me reach out to you. Uh, lately, I've had such an interesting pull because I've spent uh, a hefty percentage of my life working for and volunteering for nonprofits that had social causes. Mm-hmm. Um, so homelessness, I worked, uh, I delivered food to uh, AIDS patients who were on their last leg and couldn't, you know, they were homebound. And so that was like, I would serve them their last meals oftentimes and like mm-hmm. uh, really interesting stuff. And I, I have this interesting, it's not a shift, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a move towards like all of that is great. And I think that's a beautiful way to share the gospel but I, I am drawn, I think, right now more towards things that are explicitly evangelistic. And I know, I know you can say that's evangelistic, and I'm not saying they're not. But it's like it's almost like more of the like a decision for Christ type stuff to where yeah. I'm like, and it's probably because we're in the financial series, and I keep getting back to what good is it for a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? And I'm yeah. like... I think I, and I, I don't, I, I struggle to say this because I'm like, I think there were times where I was so uh, driven to like get food to people who didn't have it or clean water to a village that didn't have it, but not as driven to get the gospel because I was no. like, they have to have clean water in order to get the gospel, which I actually do think that's true. Like if they, if they it's, starve to death end, or yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I was like, I was, I was more focused on the delivery system than I was the actual content of the gospel early on. Mm. And I just think there's been a shift in me over the last year or so where I'm like, man, the only thing that matters is the gospel. And right. now, I, you know, to combine those two and go, oh, yeah, I want to, uh, whether it's uh, bring food, clean water, whatever it is, to, to alleviate some of the pain of, let's mm. say, homelessness. I want to do those, but it is for the purpose that you hear the gospel. So who would that be? Convoy of Hope? Who, who are you thinking? I don't know. That's a good organization, too. I, what's funny is I've got 50 good organizations in my head. And so I, I was trying to think of, a, of an individual organization. Uh, you go, because I'm thinking. Yeah, there's a couple. Um, I've always thought about in line with... You know, uh, serving others, whether it be the homeless community or those who are in addiction. So it's kind of a mixture of if it would be, uh, you know, one of the multitudes of Mm. inpatient, outpatient rehabs, as well as Salvation Army. Um, Mm -hmm. But on the other side of things, I have thought about like there's companies that like it's more for the guitar side of things, but they plant Mm -hmm. trees for every guitar that's purchased. Um, So things like that, whether it be environmental or for actually, you know, practically helping those who Mm. are getting clean and, and finding Christ. I just like the idea of planting a tree and being like, you're also going to be guitar someday. We're, oh, we are going to murder We're coming you back. Too. Oh, it's yeah. a, just so you know. That's the sustainability. We're coming that's, back. That's the, that's the trauma. It's like, but that's for, we'll be for back. profit. Right. But the tree planting obviously is. Yeah. Well, that's a good. Yeah. Uh, I think it's breed love or court guitars. And Floyd, like feel free to just talk about the one you're already doing. I realize why not give some SoulCon some Absolutely. love? Absolutely. I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah SoulCon is, is a huge part. I've been doing it for uh, quite a while. I like any, so anything to me that like, I feel like builds people, helps people grow and, and, um, men's ministry is passionate, is a passion of mine. So that SoulCon is a big part of it, but also like I'm, I'm, I'm at a, a stage in my education where I'm actually starting to dream again, which is nice. Cause it's been, um, years since I've done that. Your mm-hmm. old men will dream dreams. That's right. I'm finally catching up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so. Ooh. And so uh, oh. for the first time in a long time, I'm beginning to dream and think about the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think about, you know, I'll always continue to do ministry. Um, there will all, ministry will always be an aspect of what I do. But then uh, alongside of that, I, you know, building people educationally, like mm-hmm. helping uh, develop mentor programs, big brothers, big sisters, uh, first T. Yeah. I mean, it's what your all of those doctorate things. did. It's, so it's what my you would is in. hope yeah. that or you're going to use dissertation. Yeah, technically, yeah, yeah. 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 And my doctor is actually in general psychology, yeah. oh, but actually, yeah. doctor's in juggling. Juggling, juggling yeah. was a 
juggling. Should be in cigar smoking from nice. the from the I, ICP University. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, just I'm gonna Opening keep saying it, but mine's in, insane clown. Posse. Mine is smooth. Yeah. Mine's smoothed out, and it's even better. Oh, so it did start. That's what's funny. It's my it's my main gripe with Connecticut's are when they're too peppery. Yeah, uh, but they always mellow out. I think. Yeah, it's a, right, one, right when you anticipate a cigar would mellow out. This one exactly had the, no the spot pepper to it at all, and was smooth from the foot. So I'm excited to have it smooth mm-hmm. out even more. Yeah, this one this one as well. Uh, very smooth right off the right off the bat. Um, kind of earthy, a little earthy, which I like that nutty earthy flavor. Um, and the draw on it is just phenomenal. Oh, my draw is perfect. That's too. awesome. Yeah. My draw is yeah. perfect. My draw is good. Yeah. My All right, draw is a little tough. A little is it? Tight. Is it? Yeah. Oh, just, I think it's a little dry. He's so mad right now. Oh. It's so okay. Good. It. So they might be a little dry. Joe left them in his trunk for like two days. <laughs> oh, it's, the, so. it's the right way to, to uh, test a, I will say, to okay, review a cigar. We're going to shift into he gets us in a minute. Can I ask? This was the banter I wanted to talk about, but I realized we had to talk about the yeah, cigars. Yeah. I really, this is a real question. Have you ever had an experience where you couldn't explain it? And so I'm going to tell you my experience, and then you're kind of like, what do you do with that? Is this a current experience? It happened two days ago. Good. That's what I want. Yeah. That, just happened, exactly just happened two days ago. Okay. Let's do this. So This is uh, going to be fun. I'm, I don't know why I'm so excited right now. I, I'm, I'm baffled by it, and okay. I don't know what to do with it. So, uh, so I'm at the Kingsburg Holy Smoke Cigar Bible Study. Uh-huh. And there's a guy I've met here before named Al. He's uh, been to the Holy Smoke here at, at church. And so anyway, so I um, saw him, talked to him. He was sitting next to me. He gives me his cutter. So with his left hand, hands me his cutter. It's a little different. It's kind of one of those wonky ones where your thumb, you know, in the scissors when your thumb gets all the way in too far? Oh, yeah. yeah and then yeah, you have to yeah. pull your thumb mm-hmm. up. Well, he had a cutter like that, too. So it kind of gets caught in his hand trying to hand it to me. And so anyways, well, in the midst of him handing it to me, like trying to wrestle it out, he opens his hand up. And there is a very large, beautiful black cross tattoo on the inside of his, on his palm. And I thought, oh, wow, that's a weird spot for a cigar, for a tattoo. But it was really nicely done. It was kind of like blocked like mine. Like it was that, at least that thick, a little bigger. Very nice, kind of almost all the way on the palm, but a little bit leaking off. Can we predict what was crazy? Yeah. Go ahead. I think that when you looked at it again, it wasn't there. Yeah, there that's exactly what it was. There wasn't or an actual. It was on the other hand. <laughs> it was on his face. Ah! <laughs> what else? A moving oh, tattoo. Well, well done, yeah. <laughs> so I'm and I like I'm looking at this tattoo. Yeah, I'm looking at it, going like, what? Like in detail, like wow, that's a fascinating spot for a tattoo. Like I'm very interested. So when, as soon as he wrestles the the cutter off of his hand, I turn his hand over. Let me get a better look at that. And so he goes, what? What? And I turn his hand over. There's no tattoo there. Yeah. It's not that I thought I saw something. I'm staring at a tattoo on his hand. And then when he turns his hand over, it's not there. To the point of like, what? Yeah. Like I'd, And then he goes, is that a tattoo behind <laughs> your ear? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was on my ear. Ah, oh, this thing's moving everywhere. Wow. Is this the tattoo you saw? <laughs> How'd it get there? And so Spade. it was, and I, I told him, I was like, because I don't want to be over spiritual. Like, I'm t- trying to over spiritual. I'm like, I literally didn't, I didn't think I saw a tattoo. I stared at a tattoo. Hmm. It wasn't that, it wasn't like in passing. It was like, I was looking at it like, interesting. What a so, weird spot. So it couldn't, okay. I am by nature a skeptic of absolutely everything. Sure. Yeah. That's why I didn't make any assumptions. No, I'm no. like, I don't want to do with that. Uh, and so whether it was, hmm. if I'm in your shoes or you're s- telling this story, I have the exact same thought, which is, y- I just saw something. I just saw. That's one so of the like, options. I was just, I just thinking, see something. Like, was this, could his hand have been creased and you saw like the shadow? The right, shadow right. of the cover. Or, uh, but here's the deal. Or ash. But if I saw what you just described, I'd be like, no way was it a shadow. Right. It was a clear, artistic, t- like, you tell me. Yeah. Could it have been? Something like that? It was so big that okay. you'd have to crease his whole hand. Was you know it? What I mean, like, like this way? It or? was. So I wrote it on my own hand because I kept forgetting to tell Lisa about it. It was thicker than this, but this was the location, and it was that big. That big across and fat. 
I mean, like that is a cool placement. A yeah, big. Off, yeah. size. I, it's funny. What, kind of off on the side. When he yeah. said it, yeah. I was thinking I was right in the center. center of his hand. Yeah. But then, like off over to here, the sides, I'm like, actually really cool. Oh. The, the spilling off the and side. And my immediate thought was, why is it so dark? Because you had tattoo a palm on your hand, a tattoo on your palm. It wears off. That's yeah, it wears, wears off, off fast. Like, if you see the yeah. sides, they're all worn. So I was taken by so many aspects of it that I was dying to get a better look at it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, did I have an aneurysm? Well, did, you, did you ask him? Did you tell him about it? Yeah, I did. So you told him about it. What did, did he say? Uh, he goes, oh. Yeah. 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 That's, like, that's, like, oh, don't right. you hate that? Yeah. It's like, uh, and I didn't want to over-spiritualize it, but I kept no. thinking like, I'm like, I don't know what to do with it because that's, I've, I've definitely done this like, oh, oh no, I, I thought I saw something. Yeah. Like right. I thought I saw something. But you were staring at it. I was stared at it. And like I got the details of it. I could draw it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's I mean, it was a cross. It's not hard to draw. But, you know, you could tell. But it was like, <laughs> that's true. Well, have you ever that's tried to draw one out there? <laughs> Symmetry is actually more challenging than people make it so, out to be. <laughs> true. That's fair. That's a fair point. So what is your current takeaway and what was Lisa's take on it? Wait, I'll curiosity. give you guys mine first. What do you guys think? Oh. I'll, I'll give you my end. What do you hmm. think? Like, what do you, what do you, and have you had, a, okay, old loop mine, and then I want to hear if you had an experience that's like better. this. That's okay, better. Okay, my, my takeaway was. Um, I couldn't figure out how I miss saw it. So that's, that's what I first went with. How did I, how did I see this thing that wasn't there? So that's the first route I go down and I can't figure out, um, cause it wasn't a glance in passing. I stared yeah. at it. So I'm like, I literally, so then I prayed about it. There I was you like, go. I was, I was this is my next I just prayed about it. I'm yeah. like, God, what do you think? And, uh, and I just felt like God was saying he actually has a, if he saw this, he wouldn't care, but he has a limp. He's was injured. Um, has a, but he's so joyful. Like he's just, he has a, like a pretty severe, like walking like issue. Um, and he's just a really joyful guy. And I just felt like God was saying that he, he gives Christ love away in everything he does. That's how I took it. Mm. Like, that's just who he is. It's mm. just this open handed giving out Christ love. Yeah, to that's people. a pretty good take. Yeah. That I was what I got from it when I prayed about back. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't give the cut. But it was weird no. how God highlighted the fact that he has a reason to be grumpy and he's not. Do I you think that was it's odd mm. at all, or what? Or or do you think God has a like a different? I don't know if God, God has takes on anything, but uh, that he has the right take, right? Mm. That hot take that we use the cross like that because that's not what the cross is. The cross is a torture device. It mm. is the worst of the worst. Uh, is it is it odd to you guys at all that we don't see the cross like that one bit? Like we have to actually think. When you first mentioned it, that was not my first thought. I no. was like Christ, Jesus, you know, like no. crucifix. Have you been watching more Vody Bakum? No. No. <laughs> no. No, my gosh, no. <laughs> uh, but it just dawned on me because I was like, I wonder, because because from that point it's like yeah it's jesus and it's all good which yeah. i i do think it is but it is such an interesting realization the cross gets talked a lot of, about a, a lot, lot in the new yeah. testament so yeah, it is yeah. it is not even in the new testament is not seen as a as a negative thing you well, don't I mean, think the, so no cross, i think it's I, I think it was negative i think it's seen as victorious and when i uh, read so why, why isn't it the but tomb it was take up your cross at. it was take up your cross yeah. daily there was diet there was yeah. Yeah. Right. a lot of sacrificial yeah the cross talk. is a stumbling block to the like the, the Jews, was their the symbol foolishness. not the not the cross i well, that but was I, I should i don't know if that's true I don't, i'm not saying they didn't have that as a symbol yeah but. i think it's i think as it is a prominent symbol in the new testament in writings that it's it's not seen at it, but ultimately it's the reverse mentality right for the Jews, he was nailed to a tree, therefore. Sure. So it was seen as a victory over something that should have held him. So that's what I always saw it as. The idea of self-sacrifice. Jesus says you have no greater love than, uh, he has no greater love for his friends than he lays right. down his life for his friends. So the idea of sacrifice as opposed to death, because he defeated it. Right. So I always saw the cross as it's the sacrifice. It's not a loss. Mm. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's, it's the, it's because he says nobody takes my life from me. Uh -huh. So even the idea yeah. of the cross, I he wasn't put on it. Down. So even as we see it as this torture device, even he's like, no, they didn't torture me. It's just, I that, gave myself up. It's well, I think, I think he would admit they tortured him. That's what yeah. No, they tortured me, yeah. but they didn't kill me. Right. Like I laid down my life. Yeah. Uh, it, it really is a weird concept. I heard a preacher years ago say it. It's, it's kind of goofy, but it really is like the electric chair. Like that is such a weird concept. Yeah. That we would. Can you end. imagine if we called it the good chair, like we call yeah. Good Friday? And it would be it's like the good chair. it'd be in a you know 
a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand yeah. years when it starts to, you know, when it becomes that. But that's crazy. Yeah, that is a crazy thought that that could happen. Yeah, uh, and it is right. I've heard other people say that too, where it's like, why isn't it the tomb, like right. a stone yeah. or a tomb? Right. That would make so much more sense. That would be. But I think. I just wonder, I wonder if, because I think there's plenty of things that we do that God's like, that is not of me. Not in a negative way, but like, yeah. I would not have done that. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't choose that. Yeah. I do like yeah. that thought. It's funny, as you were saying, I've been, obviously, because the cross sent me down to thinking about this stuff. Yeah. And it just got me thinking through, like, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. That it keeps going back to this idea that the pinnacle was the choice to give up his life. Uh-huh. You know, we look at the, and I've always been like the resurrection's the big deal, but for Jesus's moment, the big Uh, deal was facing the cross. cross. Well, and it was, you know, it is the shedding, the shedding of blood is required for the remission of sin, right? That's biblical. And that's, I don't. That's where the, <laughs> that's where the, that's a know, Bible verse, Ryan. It's, Bible. Gonna, it's, that's yeah, not a joke. That's, quote. that's a Bible. Yeah, I don't know. If I and, know I, and I heard one time, I heard somebody say they were talking, it was a, a Christian speaking with a, with a Jewish person. And they said, you know, in my religion, the entire, the entire symbol of the religion is the cross. It's a, it's a symbol of suffering, but that's not the measure of the experience. And I think what, I, I don't think that I don't think it's that we're celebrating Christ's torture on the cross as much as we are celebrating what his death on the cross got us, what sure. it gave us. And sure. I think it's the it's a very selfish. A hundred percent. We're very but we're selfish human. People. That's we are yeah. very selfish. Yeah. Human nature is selfish. I mean, we've you're, talked you're, about the you're totally right. iconography and the, the symbolism that's yeah. used a lot. But um, yeah, I can see the victory. In fact, that's that's what. Um, was it first Corinthians when that's Paul's he's boasting. He says, you know, man doesn't boast ex- uh, except bef- yeah. before the cross or from the cross uh, in God's victory. So I think I can see both ways and in essence, and then there's different denominations. Like my, uh, my neighbor had crucifixes all over the house and I wasn't used to that. Yeah. I was used to the Lutheran church, which had this nice sharp lined yeah. minimalist, uh, icon of the cross. Yeah, I saw you one know? on some guy's hand recently. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Tell us about it. <laughs> so I just think that's interesting. It's like, I, I see what you're saying. I don't think it's wrong. Yeah. I don't no, think it's, no, it's a, it's, I, it's I a think, mixed bag for sure. I don't sure. think it's right. wrong by any means. I think it's interesting, and I wonder, and I, th- I don't even know why this hit my, my mind. Uh, I just wonder if if God is like, man, I wish you guys would focus on like something more. And, and again, not that he's upset. It's not that it's just that there, is there a better symbol or the chosen has a, a different one, a different cross. Is they it have the a X? different symbol. It's the tomb. It's the, t- it's a, it's a circle, a closed circle. And then like a, an open circle. And then oh, it's really? the they do like tomb a stone oh, all the way, cool. yeah. the fun. open tomb. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Even more heresy. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but mostly because it was because the word there's arrow and it was picked up and moved away. It wasn't real. You know, exactly. It's, right. picked up like, I, that's what I was say. Um, um, but there, but it's just, and again, I just wonder, or if it very much is that, that that is the correct view of following Christ is this massive sacrificial life that we have, uh, I don't want to say watered down that we have, made simpler the gospel versus sure. the gospel in scripture really is this like it's die to yourself take up your cross daily yeah. it is there's a lot of rough symbolism in the new testament it is that so. passage luke nine twenty three: take up your cross daily you have yeah. to daily make yeah. a decision to take up your cross and follow him yeah. yeah and offer yourselves as a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice like there's a lot of so any takes rough. on this crazy cross okay. situation and oh. then i want to hear yours like if you have anything that you are like nope I can't explain it. It's not as simple as I thought I saw something. I want it to be as simple as I thought I saw something. All right. But what do you guys think? I want to what hear. do you think about the cross on from, the hand? From his story, what are your thoughts? Yeah, because that's really all you got. Well, I think the first thing that I was thinking was was the why. Like, why would you, why would, you know, if that was something that you saw um, and you feel like it was like something God was sharing with you, why? And so you prayed about it. Why? But I was also thinking like, too, because I think we've talked about recently at some point, whether on on uh, the podcast or not, that you were like talking about tattoos and getting new ones and stuff. So maybe that was on your mind at the time. I don't know. Lisa thought I was trying to sell her on a hand tattoo. I'm like, like oh, I'm gonna tell her the yeah. story. She's like, is this because I mean, you wanted already, a tattoo on your hand? On the palm of your hand? It. Tell me what what was your response? I go no. 
Oh. <laughs> that was all, like, because I could, like, because I could say, like, I could just get one if I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. It's so He's funny. How, one now. That's how my, but it's like the minute somebody's like, is that because you want me to say it's okay? It was like, oh, I don't need you to yeah, say it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen doing. my body? <laughs> I don't need you to say it's okay to do this. Uh, anyway, do you want a cross tattoo on your hand? No, he has not one. at all. No, he already has not one. on the not on the palm of my hand. No. The palm of the hand seems off. like a weird tattoo. I actually no. loved it. Yeah. It's What's super funny cool now love, seeing it. I love seeing it drawn on your hand. I'm like, I it's that. super oh, I cool. It. I can't it's see super it cool. Yeah. I just trying to get yeah. the. the like, I, I love get, that location. I was trying to get I, scale. Is that going to be your first tattoo? Yeah, that's my first tattoo. hair. It's only place no hair in the body. I need the palm of my hand. How about you, Floyd? Any thoughts on that tattoo on this experience? I don't know. I, I kind of lean towards Josh's uh, thought or at least where I thought he was going. Like, I think a lot of times what I think a lot of times those kind of circumstances are to drive us into a I like that he waits until I'm talking to do it. <laughs> uh, well, he just knows. This can't, is, this I is can't when adjust it if there's no sound. It, that's right. He's doing it because he's like, this is when nobody's listening. This is when nobody's so paying attention. One hundred percent. I think a lot of times what I think a lot of times when those things happen in my experience is when those things happen, it's really to drive me into conversation with God. Mm. And I wonder if maybe a lot of times when those things happen, I maybe that's the purpose because God's ultimate, you know, ultimate goal is for us to be closer to Him. Mm. And anything that drives us into his presence, I think, is is the right thing. Mm. All right. Nice. Did it ask? Very, very uh, how, about, nice. how about you? Uh, so, <laughs> so I have a tendency to under-spiritualize other people's experience sure. and over-spiritualize my own. Which we all do that, right? Um, is that a normal thing? Do you I guys think do that so. Too? Yeah. I do, too. Okay, good. I'm less likely to believe someone else that than actually myself. Makes me, that makes me feel yeah, better. Because I know me. Yeah. I feel like a terrible person. Right. But, you but are. I, I over spiritualize so many things in my life, right. and I and I do that personally. I don't share them with anybody because right. I'm not. I don't. You know, they're for me if they are if they are at all. And I don't think over spiritualize something in my own life is harmful. Whereas I feel like if I over if I attribute spirituality to something in your life with you, that's actually harmful to you, right? Because I'm adding something that's not true. Right. Whereas if I do it to me, that's God and I will work that. Yeah. Out. Sure. Uh, so when I hear you say that, I go, ah, you, you miss saw it. You yeah. didn't actually see, you know, it's, there was a shadow type thing. Like I dismiss it very quickly. He and rebukes then, it actually. And I rebuke it. <laughs> <laughs> he stands against it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then I, you know, as you're talking, I'm like, why not? Like God does weirder things than that in my life. Yeah. Uh, I've seen so many odd things and sometimes I, I, I don't know why I, mm. I, fight against this so much. Yeah. I, I think something, I think I, I want things to be so profound and solid. Like, because yeah. when we read scripture, you know, and again, I think we talked about this a while ago, but like miracles in scripture are so big yeah. and concrete. Yeah. And then we're like, today we're like, oh, it's a nice day. It's a miracle. And right. I'm like, that's just a sunny day for crying out loud. Yeah. Like, we're attributing miracles to, to smaller and smaller things as yeah. time goes on, which is sad to me. Uh, but and, and I don't, I wouldn't even call that a miracle. I, I, I you can. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Uh, but I would say I'm a miracle. You're a Joe, miracle of life. You shouldn't be you're here. A miracle. But then I think like, why can't God speak in fun ways like that? Mm. Why can't he? Because sh- again. If let's say all of it's true, he did have that cross. That was for him to know, for just for you to know that he's a good guy. Even yeah. it's, let's say it's as simple as yeah. that. That it's almost like a discernment thing. Yeah. You're, you're showing that he's he's a good person. Um, yeah, I think that, that didn't might... cause anyone to do anything good or bad. It was yeah. just like, oh, that's nice. That's I think all. that might be a good shift for all of us because we're all kind of cynical to a degree, skeptical maybe is the better word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I remember one time, and I think we've talked about it on the podcast before, like, I was praying and God showed me the color orange. And you're like, why? Yeah, what does that right, mean? Right, like, yeah. why not? Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we truly and honestly, genuinely believe that God can do anything that he wants to do. Yeah. Why but does it I, have I to just, have some I, profound I think meaning my to question, us if it means something to them, right? Yeah. So that my question always is for myself or others is the why. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is true, but I just wonder is God doing things with no purpose? Yeah. I would argue no. Yeah. I would argue that everything he does has a purpose. Is God doing anything with a purpose that we don't have the ability to see the purpose? 
But 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 yes, but why if it's something like showing you the color orange or showing you a cross on that guy's hand, what we act like God is trying to keep secrets from us. It's like, kind of like when someone's speaking in tongues, but you don't have anyone there to interpret it. That's a it's great like, example. Why would God? Why would God? Yeah, it's yeah. a great I example. I think it's funny. Is it's good. This is a really good discussion because I kind of walked away with going like. So we did the cigars first. Interesting, <laughs> um, because. And so then I was just like, so God, why for me? Like why? And I kind of got this really cool idea is that just reminding me that there is a supernatural world around me. And I think a lot of times I just, you don't see it. You don't experience it. You're not messing with that. You're not in that world that I just get into this very much like black and white. Here's what the word says. Here's, here's how you do things. Here's how you live your best life now. Here's how you do all these, these Mm -hmm. good things. And, and all of a sudden Christianity becomes a self-help book. And so for me, Mm -hmm. that experience later, retrospect a couple days later, I was kind of like, yes, you know what? I, I've just, I I did kind of get this. Yeah. Why not? I've not been thinking like this. I don't think along the lines of that, that this world, a, a supernatural world is either layered on top of this one or this one's inside a supernatural world. One or the other. There's but, no other mm, option between the, those th- two. Yeah, it's one of the, I don't know. <laughs> well, the, the basically saying is black that supernatural white. is a part he of this. He said there's black a multiverse white. theory. I mean, <laughs> come on, there's more theories. Is, is there anything to the, is there anything to <clears throat> like you're mentioning that to him? Did that encourage him in any way? Is there something the to too. too, right? Yeah. yeah. If and he I, comes back next week with a tattoo, yeah. what, what if he renounces his faith because of it? He goes, I goes, well, I was going to get a tattoo over here. And I'm like, dude, that's not the point. I saw yeah, something really don't, cool. Don't, don't try make this to about you. This. Don't make this, this, this is about my experience with God. But then the artist gives him Peter's cross. Like, <laughs> that's right. uh, it still works. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, um, I can come up with a dozen reasons why it would be the case. Yeah. Which is funny. Uh, and, and I could easily, you know, have a, a million excuses as to why it wasn't r- quote unquote real. Right. Uh, so that's why I think it's kind of fun. Do you have you one? Had those. I was going to, that's what I was going to ask. Do you guys have ask. one like this? Have you had something like that? I've had you... a bunch of where it's like, nah, yeah. like, I'm like, no, that's me. like where you call yourself sure. out. You're like, nah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see that. And then other ones where I'm like, nope. Yeah. I don't know what to do with that. But have you guys ever had an experience that is pretty much unexplainable? It do, I, you don't even have to prove it to us. Just oh. some experience. <laughs> he says that. <laughs> Good luck. Then I'm saying this. You don't have to start with proving it. I'm eventually going to make you prove it. Well, yeah. it's, it, it's Just show me a picture. That's a pretty, oh, sorry. That is a, a pretty concrete, tangible, you know, and, and you were awake. So like, yeah. a lot of things that I've... I've talked about seeing oh, is in dreams. You're lucid sure. dreaming. But, yeah, lucid Ryan. dreaming. But I'm thinking, I know. I feel like that Joe ash, over here with yeah, the amount of ash. ash the everywhere. amount of just, you know, just ash. Yeah, I don't even use the ash. The amount of, you know, in recollection and rec- possibly there have been supernatural instances where I've seen. I've seen more, uh, I think, frankly, um, Kind of like revelation of, of the darker supernatural. All right, mm-hmm. like what? Good. Come on, I, I we want specific. I actually figured ghosts are, were going to be the, the other because I thought that's probably more common. Yeah, but ghosts or demons. You know what I mean? Like I was stuff like say, that. But we, I don't think anybody here would say ghosts. I know. I'm using right? it for I'm using it for popular um, culture yeah, reference. Yeah. I've had multiple instances where I would, I don't know, I'd be wandering around somewhere in the city because I was totally out on, and but I was and obviously not sober. Oh, um, okay, okay. But then I would find myself paranoid and and seeing dark figures or shadows, and I'd realize, oh, it's it's um, some uh, homeless people walking yeah. down the street. But I I swear they're running at me and they're ch- and they're yelling yeah. at me and they're gonna you know. So this so is that's... tough. I think uh, so. Uh, like I said, like we just said earlier, I've done a lot of work with the homeless population and. Mm-hmm. But one thing Evicting that I, I them from your away, rental homes isn't working with homeless. Yeah, people. no, I work with I work with them to get out okay. of my house. All right, um, making sure we're nice. Same the, there is a huge correlation of mental health disorders with the homeless population and drug abuse with the with hallucinate. You know, you hallucinate a lot. Yeah, right. Uh, but it's so funny because I had this question years ago when. I I saw so much spiritual activity in that community mm. more than I saw outside. And I'm like, and the question I, I was left with and still am left with is does the spiritual affect the physical or does the physical affect the spiritual? As And what I mean is that do those people have a spiritual encounter, whether it's negative or positive, that, you know, of demon possession, let's say, mm-hmm. and they go insane and they go homeless? 
Or does being homeless and having mental health disorders open a door to the spiritual realm that is, uh, that is, is not seen in other places? Because when you read scripture, a lot of what we see that, is a, that has a demonology with it is a lot of mental health disorder. And there, there's a correlation that in every one of the, the demon possessions that we have in scripture, they've gone back through. Psychologists have gone back through and actually named modern day mental health disorders to them, yeah. mm. not saying, and in fact, a lot of them were Christians and they weren't saying like, uh, see, these aren't demon possessions. They were sure. saying we might be calling some things physical when they're actually spiritual yeah, and right. vice versa. But I, I think it's weird because when somebody says something like that, and I've done this a lot where they're like, man, I was high and I saw this demon. Right. And it's so easy to go, yeah, because you were high, you idiot. Right. Of course so I'm you... cynical at the, right. at the... Yeah. However, the because of my experiences, of I go, dude, I think that may open doors to the spiritual but, realm that right. we don't totally aren't possible, used to. But, Ayahuasca's right. like that, right? right? Yeah. Like but before, before I was doing, when I got into that life, I had night terrors and sleep paralysis yeah. when I was young. And then through therapy and counseling, they were saying that these, these occurrences can happen from anxiety, from... Uh, trauma in your childhood wow. yeah. and it just manifests itself. And I go, yeah, but this, oh, it's not like I'm, oh. I'm repeating <laughs> what I experienced. I'm waking up, I can't move. And there's a dark figure saying scary things. Yeah. It's terrifying me as a kid, making me develop insomnia when right. very young. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, right. I don't know. How do you sort that out? Is, right. it, yeah. is it possible that the, because like we know, like they say, you're, you, you don't become a different person when you drink or get high or whatever, but it does remove your inhibitions. Is that, is there any correlation between thinning the, like this, your doubt, right? Like, yeah. you know I mean, like you're more open to seeing things, uh, because you're high. I think it, I don't, I don't know. I think that, it's yeah, an amplifier. I, I've heard that. I don't think I, when people, I think that's kind of a cop out when they say it makes you a different person. I think, yeah, I um, but I, there is obviously a, a, yeah, and I a reality it, of blacking out. There's a point where you're not, sure. your inhibitions not, are so yeah. gone. Um, I do believe that when you're doing that, I think God has given us natural free will. We're called to be sober-minded. So when we're actively choosing to go against those things, and, and I don't want to feel the way I'm feeling, I'm not thinking about God at that time, clearly. Sure. And I'm being purely selfish. The reason I think it amplifies more than just uh, diminishes or covers up mm -hmm or uh, freeze you from your, your fear. Because if you're fearful, you never had a, it, a drunk it friend be terrified. Oh inhibitions. Or no, be angry. I, yeah, that, I've had him be angry. Brutal. And so, it amplifies. So yeah. is it like fully to kind of the combination of these two thoughts here is, is it like, well, now I'm more open to seeing things and or is it now demons are more open to visiting you? You know what yes. I mean? Like, cause I think like, it's yes to both. Yeah, because you're like, no, this is yeah. a spot to be <laughs> <Or no>. visited. <laughs> but it's, that's what that that's what my question has always been. I don't think there's a, a very clear Because we do answer. believe things open doors. Well, right? and that's my thing. I, I do I, think I, there are things that open doors. And right? we, what we're talking about are usually, let's talk about overusing any of these substances uh, could be deemed a sin and probably is excess in general. Yeah. Uh, yeah, gluttony. So you are, like you say, opening yourself up, making it more accessible. It's like this idea that, you know, and it sounds so cheesy. And I think it, 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 whenever I even think about analogies, they just sound like they're, they're almost stupid. But I'm like, you know, are you more likely to, to, to have a negative spiritual experience worshiping in church or like in a drug den somewhere, like smoking sure. dope and getting crazy? Right. It's like... I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer. Depends what, on what's church. amazing is, despite despite that statistical likelihood, it's Jesus is so much more powerful than that. And yeah. there's te numerous testimonies of people who've, in the midst me, in the midst of my, I called the cops over twenty times, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm just praying, I need help, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for somehow, if I, I can't recognize myself, I don't know my name, I can't tell it to the cops. Yeah. But I had the cognition to call my dad and give him the address where I'm at. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, before well, we hurt ourselves. Well, and uh, on, layered on top of that, so you said drug den, right? Well, how many crimes have been committed there? Does that draw demons? If mm. people have been murdered and raped in oh, that spot, man. is that the other one? Like, is, is that geographically like geographically? Well, that's the that's the chicken um, and egg of the supernatural, right? It's right. like, did yeah. demons inhibit this place where people then murdered and raped, or did murder and rape? 
draw. The, the, the right? R word gets us demonetized, by the way, yeah. on YouTube. Does it really? Up, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, oh, we're making so much money too. It's really going to affect us. Uh, okay, uh, Floyd, do you have something? Yeah, you do can't you have explain? anything like that? I don't. I don't have anything that jumps to mind. I. I mean, I've seen a bunch of crazy stuff, but I. I don't know. I guess because because I am of the belief that God can do anything He wants, I don't tend to discount things. Hmm. You know, I'd rather give God credit for good things that he didn't care about than to take credit away from God for something good. Mm, the other side good. of that coin is dangerous, though, because then you 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 blame God. You can have a tendency to blame God for things that you caused by your own. That's actually very good. Yeah. I, I was going to say that the... So it sounds like you tend to, and this isn't an insult at all, you mm. tend to over-spiritualize. And, and yeah. over-spiritualize is probably the wrong term. Just You tend to, yeah, spiritualize, project right. spiritualization on things. Sure. Uh, which I love because I'm like, I am the same regard. I don't think that's necessarily bad. Yeah. But I love that you just said that, yeah. that it's like the negative of that is mm. that now you just kind of, everything's out of your hands. Right. Mm. And I don't have free will. Way. I've seen people yeah. be that way. Now, I, I tend to not be that way. I, yeah. And this is the weird thing. Like, I tend to uh, celebrate God in the good times and rather and than blame, blame the, yeah, rather than blame the enemy for the negativity, yeah. I blame myself. I heard Ruslan say, I think it was Ruslan recently, uh, said something like, you, you shouldn't need a miracle to heal you from a disease of lifestyle. Hmm. And I thought that's, that's pointed. really powerful, man. Mm. That's, that's funny. I, I heard, I think that was him. I think it was uh, him. Right? Was and he had I his buddy hear, on. That yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I thought that was, uh, what's funny is that was based on, uh, oh shoot. Anyway, it's, it was going to take us down a tangent. Uh, I, that's a, that's a weird slippery slope where I'm right. like, you're right. And I do think there are ramifications for our actions. Well, but at the same time, I'm also like... What if lifestyle isn't sin-based? Well, also, what if it... Right. Doesn't mm. God save us from ourselves all the well, time? All the time. Yeah. And I'm not saying know. that means live an unhealthy lifestyle sure. right. as right. we smoke cigars. There, there are certain natural laws, right? Seed, time, cigars. and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest is a natural law. So what you sow, you will reap to some degree, right? Then to there's also degree. biblical verses of... You will reap where you have not sown. Yeah, exactly. That's, good. that's, so that's, that's, saying, the, that's the point you're making. That's, yeah. that's yeah. exactly right. It's like, it's like, are you saying then God only gives miracles to the people who are innocent? Yes, no. that, that's my problem. It's like, the, well, who's innocent? Exactly. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that you, now you're saying that you actually, and I've heard this preached a lot, and it, it's scary to me, is that you're really a main part of the miracle. Like you are dictating it. It's up to, right. did you pray hard enough? Were right. you in the right place at the right, right time? Did you read your Bible enough? Are you right. righteous Fasting. enough? And I'm like, wait a minute. We Only one leper returned. Yeah. So other ones got healed who were complete The other ones got healed also. Yeah. Right? And they're just like, yeah. yeah, I don't care. Bye. You know what's funny? I wonder... I wonder if I read that differently because I'm I, like... I'm using it for the example. Sure, sure. Like, because I don't necessarily think that. Yeah. They could just be excited to go tell Miss, the family. They were just super excited. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going down. He's misusing it for the yeah, example. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Um, okay, Ryan, what, uh, do you, what do you have? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a number. The, the most striking one that comes to mind I is I was it. driving. <laughs> I was driving and I turned. I, I, I can picture it still. Uh, I made a right-hand turn. As I made the right-hand turn... Everything around me uh, started to burn up. L like it looked like Constantine the movie. You know how when he looks into and he starts to see the decay, everything decays real fast and then becomes like fire and everything's burning. Yeah, when he's in hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I turned the corner and everything out the windows did that. And I mean like, and it wasn't like I was picturing it. They did that and I was kind of like what the frick and I look at the car and the car starts to disintegrate in the same way and it's burning and I'm just like I, I'm like looking around I wasn't scared at all and I remember praying like God what is happening confused. Had this, totally confused yeah. uh, but not not fearful in the slightest bit just confused uh, God and I had this pretty neat conversation I I don't think he was speaking audibly but it was one of those like I knew exactly what he I felt he like so I knew what he was saying that way. very clear mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I just couldn't, I was, you know, talking back and forth. Uh, everything pretty quickly went and came back to normal. 
and I'm looking around, and I'm a, I'm a mile down the road, stopped at a stop sign. Everything's, and I'm like, okay. And then I just drove the rest of the way home and like talked to God about uh, what was going on. And it was pretty clearly a time in my life where I was very wrapped up in uh, earthly things. Mm -hmm. And I was taken by a lot of the earthly things and thought that had a big draw on my life. And uh, the Lord was making it real clear. He said, this all burns up. This all goes away. None of this is uh, is eternal, mm. and it was kind of like get your priorities straight. Like mm. know what matters, know what's real. Mm. Your soul is the only thing that lasts into eternity. Take care of that. Stop worrying about this other stuff, and it changed my life forever. So yeah. you guys both have gift of prophecy, don't you? Spiritual yeah. gift of prophecy. Yeah, his is more so. Mine's more like, like words and knowledge. Like God just reveals mm. stuff that's true, okay. like you know, about somebody more than and I, like everybody. Everybody, the Holy Spirit can prophesy. So I yeah. have like yeah. God's done some cool stuff. But that's definitely not my primary deal. My like primary is like God reveals that might be interesting evidence, things to you know? me about yeah. people. I like yeah. you made that distinction. I somebody recently I was talking to people who kept saying they have the the spiritual gift of discernment, but they and I felt bad because I'm like, I think you have a gift of discernment. The spiritual gift of discernment is discerning of spirits. Yeah. And I felt dumb because I'm like, I don't want to sit here and correct you, but like a, a spiritual gift is different from what you're saying. Yeah. And so I just, I, I, I like when Christians know what we're talking about. And yeah. so I like that you're like, oh, it's more of this. And I'm like, oh, that's right. nice. It's yeah. nice to hear. It's really, it's really like if I'm praying for someone, God just reveals something cool about them uh, that either I'm supposed to share or not. But yeah, where Ryan actually has like gift of prophecy, where it's actually like stuff's going to happen mm-hmm. or, you know, and I've done that. God's definitely given that to me a few times, but it's not my thing by any means. It's like, it's almost like I'm the only one there. So he gives it to me because I'm the only person at all who's even listening yeah. for that. And stuff. And you're right. God, I think God wants to do that. According to Paul wants to do that with everybody for all Christians to kind yeah. of prophesy at some point, yep. mm-hmm. which biblically is just speaking the heart of God. So I yeah. would that you all would prophesy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Okay. Uh, good, That's in, fun. good investment in labels. Uh, Mine had uh, three. Very That's nice. That's not cheap. Oh, you have three? Yeah. Oh yeah. I had, I, had had ribbon. Ribbon. I had a ribbon foot yeah. too. Yeah, Minus and, three and well. uh, according to your theory, and that nice. the ease of the label removal These speaks great. to the quality of the cigar. Did did anybody pull true. off some of their cigar? Not, not at all. Well. Not, not, at not all. one. And it was. wasn't loose. You know, sometimes when people try to go, they try to yeah. game it by putting a loose label on there. I'm super impressed. Yeah, they Halfway came off in, easy. It, it's delicious. It's amazing. Yeah. Mine's Dude, great too. I I I want you guys to have this one because I'm I'm genuinely surprised. We even said Clay, just so you know. We said ahead of time, uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie. And so we said, if these are bad, we, we're going to feel really stupid because we're going to say they're bad. Mm. Uh, these are not bad. These are fantastic. not what I said. Great. I said, let's give Ryan the one because he can't bring himself to saying they're bad. That's true. So okay. let's make sure the one that looks the best. Maybe that's true. Because I will find nice things to say about it. But it is actually genuinely good. And it's way more full than a normal Connecticut. So this has I a much like fuller so body. Much. Yeah, I can't wait. I really, I really want to have that Connecticut. And I, I, what's funny is I now I want to all. try them all. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna get a bunch of five packs and we'll. Okay. It'll so be good to me. So um, let's shift gears. And yeah. Let's go so into what were you mentioning about he the Gets He Gets Us organization? Okay. So this is something I wanted to talk about since the Super Bowl. So let's start here. You, we all were together for the Super Bowl. We also we all watched commercials. the same ads, right? I did we, not we, see the ads. 60 yeah. second the and ad? a 30 second. No, it's, it's a work night for me. It's easy to explain okay, them, so, though. So did you see the ads? I saw the one of the transient people. Okay. I saw the washing feet one online afterwards. Okay, yes. so you have seen them. Oh, I saw it. So he's got the washing feet what? and then who's my neighbor. Those are the two commercials. Oh, so did you not see Jesus the washing feet one? No. Ah, shoot. Um, Jesus doesn't hate. He washes feet. And the other one is who's the, my neighbor. that's the one where most of the controversy is coming, That was correct? the 60-second one. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was longer. Tell me your knee-jerk reaction, your good, bad, or indifferent. Foot-jerk reaction. What? Your what? Foot-jerk reaction? Oh. Okay. Tell me what you thought. Uh, I I might ruin it and and kill the conversation. You won't. What would you know? There, we're uh, going to talk about all the other perspectives because on it too. because the I saw it based upon the people that were criticizing it. And no 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 no. Oh oh I yeah, see. My my. So you don't have a reaction just to the ad. I do. Yeah. My ahead. reaction. Well, I don't know if I do or not. I think my reaction would be the same either way. Like, yeah, he washed Judas's feet too. So and that's, that's, that's my reaction. Like, because I think, I think one of the, 
I saw it in response to the criticism of. I was going to say. So you yeah. you are looking at it through the lens of criticism, and that's that's my. The, I wrote a devotional several years ago for the for the Soulcon app because I I was that guy like I would be that guy like Peter. No God, I'm not I'm not worthy of this. And then you say, wait a minute, he washed Judas's feet too. Mm. Like the feet that were literally left that room to go betray him. Yeah. Mm. And he washed his feet too. And, and so, I, I don't know, I, I have a hard time with the criticism. And I, I don't find any criticism in it. To me, it was like I saw the ad and I was like, oh, yeah, that's normal. Okay. Because okay. he came to serve humanity. Uh, so Josh, you didn't Josh, see what? the washing feet one? Or He's the, washing, it, washing right it right now. now. Yeah. Okay, I'll respond while you wash. Yeah. Thought it was amazing. I loved it. It hit, it hit all the right notes for me. I thought from literally the delivery of it uh, to the art, to the message. Very artistic. Yeah. I mean, I, thought, I literally thought every aspect of it, to the length of it, to the, the messaging. Is of, it just geez. a slideshow of photos? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Making sure it's just a slideshow of photos. And, uh, and I thought yeah. the selection of whose feet were being washed versus who was washing the feet. I liked every bit of it. And I thought it was, I thought my, my take on it was, hmm. was more a message to Christians and non-Christians, believe it or not. That was my, when I first saw Agree. it, I, I thought, oh, interesting. I thought it was more a message to Christians than non-Christians. Yeah. Cause you could, you could tell the framing of who, what, what the players were in the video, Yeah. right? Who was on each side of it. Yeah. And so I thought that was, I was curious how the rest of the world would respond to that, but I took that as, Hey, that's a message to us. Who's, he's. They're saying Jesus has washed people's feet. That's the message globally. But the message to the church was, whose feet are you washing? That's right. how I took it. Yeah, I, I, I think own. I was... What? My own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. But you should. I, we know which picture you were. Um, I think I was... I was 50-50 when I saw it of, of who it was to. Because I think I took the personal message of, like, Christ is washing these people's feet. Mm. These feet. Um, Feetses. What's my role in that also? But I immediately thought um what a great message what a great conversation starter to anyone who feels like they're uh, they're an outsider yeah. of of this just kind of saying <laughs> of this saying like <laughs> he washes feet jesus oh. lo loves you yeah. uh so so i see that what, and what, then, the, what and then the verbal writing too was also like the so jesus I, didn't teach hate i was gonna say i i was in the exact same boat as you maybe it's because we were sitting next together and we were influencing yeah, each other, but yeah. i loved every bit of it i actually Endured thought it. what an interesting stylization i thought deep saturated colors with a with a faded uh yeah. grizzled they, they were they were like just really stylized. well done photo, highly stylized photographs mm -hmm. like they looked like photoshop projects mm -hmm. honestly so interesting or they look like ai, photos. <laughs> they like yeah. AI photos. so that was because, one of yeah, the so. there's a an effect in photography where a lot of the area is in focus mm. it's a type mm. of effect um and some of them were it's just interesting yeah. they're very vivid so one of the uh detractors that I heard about it was it looks like they blew their whole budget on paying for the ad and they had Dolly AI uh, come up with the photos. Mm. And I was like, okay, but I, and this is what was but weird. If Dolly crushes it. They said that it looked so cringy. No, there's, and no. I thought it was gorgeous stylization. I, loved it. I felt no, stupid that I liked see, it so much. When people are looking for something to criticize, they'll I, criticize. I, and by the way, I'll everything. be the first one to jump on the pacing, the music, the image. I'll be just like, oh my gosh, you spent right. all this money, you put a right. turd out there. I'm like, I was like, no, no, all of this. I works. thought the, I thought the, 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 Track was awesome. I thought the pacing was awesome. I thought the st the wording was, was it great. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Did you do you have that same thought? I just watched it. Yeah, beautiful. Um, but then when he says that he doesn't teach hate, I think that was, I think it's yes to both. It was. It is fifty fifty. Yeah. Really, wherever you are, because even if I say I'm a Christian, yeah, I could be full of hate. Uh huh. And I'm not. Which, ironically, I'm not being very Christian. Yeah. Truly. And to those who are maybe outsiders. Um, that's like, that is, yeah, that's what, no, I thought he does. Like, I'm going to talk to that one guy who's on the corner. Like, I thought you hated me. 
and it's going to spark conversation. Oh yeah. And it, the fact it's supports that guy in the oh, corner to be like, I do. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, the okay. problem. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Is like that guy's like, no, no, that commercial's wrong. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but I do love it. Was you know all the different geographical settings, uh, cultures, ages. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a the the priest. You know, so it's really it's really beautiful. H- okay. Historical, uh, recent historical conflict people right people who are in yes. conflict so they yeah. pick they pick people specifically yeah. recently in, in conflict so very well very well done so now that you've heard our takes we are absolutely in the minority mm-hmm. apparently especially in the christian camps yeah i actually thought so i i watch and listen to and read a lot of contemporary christian guys Brad that <laughs> What did he say? What did he say? Is it much? Brag much? Hey, no. <laughs> that was definitely not a brag. Uh, and guys that I tend to agree with now, and I'm like, maybe they've shifted my mindset. I don't know. But but when this started to pop up, and all these people were like, this was trash. This yeah. was blasphemy. This was heresy. And I got two specific challenges that stuck in my mind. Yeah. That people oh, made. So that's I had I listed a few because I wanted us to go through. And it, originally, I was thinking we should steel man their arguments, and I was like, you know what? No. Because I think what I'd like to do is hear, I'd like us to actually thoughtfully go through and see, is there any validity to some of the things that that I've heard as far as this is why this was trash, this ad campaign is trash. So number one, and this is what I heard I think the most of, uh, that the main supporter of these ads, the main funder, is... David Green of Hobby, Hobby Lobby. Lobby. Mm-hmm. Right. They, he is, a, he is a, a very conservative Christian lobbyist who spends a lot of money to lobby his beliefs uh, and has been a part of some kind of negative things in the past with some, socially some, negative. Yeah, right. nas- some white nationalist type ideas that other people would say those are or... Uh, funding stuff like the the uh, Affordable Care Act, and he mm-hmm. was against that. Mm-hmm. Is there any validity whatsoever to this being funded? And I'm not saying David Green is. Please hear me in that. I I don't. I have no opinion on him, positive We're or negative. We're just trying to pick at it. Does an ad campaign that puts something out does it matter who is behind it? This is fairly loaded because of also the chosen is so big right now, and there's been a lot of flack the chosen. And let me unpack this mm-hmm. a little bit. So, come near is the is the organization that's doing it, and they initially were connected so to other two very yes. political groups last year. Yes. So they parted ways with that group and became their own thing, and just saying no. So they might be getting receiving money, but even they saw we need to be another degree separated from these groups. Uh, who do have some political ties. So there is a very direct connection to what they were involved in. Then you have someone like uh, David Green that were connected to it. Currently the CEO, no political ties that we know of. He was the CEO of Compassion International uh, and then Papa Murphy's for a little bit before this. It's a very Christian organization. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so you have Papa, this. So as now in they're God the Father the, Murphy's. Mm, Abba Murphy. So, Abba Murphy. So now they're standing on their own, but they're getting funding. Right, they're getting funding yeah. from people like David Green, and I want to say it's a small group of, you know, Christian billionaires. That's so, what I've heard. Yeah, that's so what I've started, heard also. Right, a yeah. small group yeah. of Christian funds. And a hundred million dollars was the amount they raised for this campaign a year so ago. So let's do this. Like, it, truthfully, does the does the money behind it or the source? I'm not even saying the creative source, okay? Because I think that could be a different category. Does the money behind something like a campaign? Does it matter? Maybe it's the, even go with a, the money behind a nonprofit, the money behind a church. Uh, does that matter? The source of that, does that matter to the message to you? And biblically, what do you guys so think? The, the first thing that I find funny about this conversation is that I feel like you were a little bit shocked that we were um, outside of the normal conservative Christian response. I uh, wasn't shocked by that. I was shocked that the normal Christian response was so, so negative. With so platforms. Followed, yeah. And we said with platforms. With people, platforms. That's weird because yeah. we both there, were looking. I couldn't on either might side be, of the aisle. There mm-hmm. might be people who loved it. But uh, as far as the – and again, this is from the mainstream Christian yeah. media that I've mm-hmm. seen and the non-Christian side. Both of them hated it. Yeah, both And I was – 
blown which away. Is I read I'm it, like, which is I read kind a, of ironic. I read Where a number of articles, and none of them, none of them were supportive. Mm-hmm. And even quoting someone like the head of the Babylon B, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so they quoted yeah. like in negative guys so, that I sometimes, you know, that guys that I usually agree with on things, you know, 80% yeah. agree with. Yep. I I'm like, Oh, none of them are saying this had, none of them are even saying it had anything positive in it. They were like, this is a hundred percent negative. This is not and I Jesus. Was blown away. Like a couple of the titles had the same ones. Like they don't get Jesus. It kind of reminds me. They don't like, get Jesus. They don't it, get Jesus. I was wow. like, it kind of reminds me of, I mean, it's, of all the gospel, the persecution that he experienced and his followers. Mm. I mean, performing miracles, saving lives, saying that I am, I am he. That's know? funny, though. And I'm, I'm trying really hard. It's funny that we started with this conversation. So I'm, the Pharisees I'm, saying that. But I'm trying really hard not to, not to over-spiritualize this. I don't want to make it sound like... I'm not. No, no, I don't think you are. No. Uh, I'm saying I like... I think you are. Okay. I, I, I think you did. I don't think you meant to. Mm. Um, is the... The... I don't even want it to be this like this pharisaical oh. that all the guys that I've listened to who hate the ad, they're the Pharisees because this is the real Jesus. No, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I wouldn't that. say they were. I'm saying that that human that behavior, yeah. that, that's the, and he, it's, the word tells us that's the way the world is going to be for those who follow Christ. So I don't, on, on a real note, because this was one of the main criticisms that I heard, does the finance... Does the money backing something matter right. to you? Sorry, question. And then yeah. biblically, do you think it matters? Uh, I had a, a, a guy that I used to work with um, in ministry. Uh, he, he stood in the pulpit one time and said, if you win the lottery, don't bring your tithe here. We don't want that dirty money. And uh, afterwards, By, the lottery was dirty money. Yeah. And I because gambling, gambling. gambling. Oh, okay. And afterwards, people, I told him to shut up. It's the worst gambling ever. I said, you know what? I go, and my, pers- my, my perspective is this. Money isn't dirty based upon where it comes from. It's dirty based upon what you do with it. And like physically speaking, all if money I is dirty. If I murdered someone for money, so it wouldn't be dirty money. I'm not, I'm asking. No, I'm no, not, I'm I don't not. Like not this conversation. You, you would, it would be dirty to you because of how you obtained so it. So it's the, it's the 30 pieces of silver for me, but the right. silver itself, if someone else spent it, like the people who bought. G.L. Johnson right. used took to say that the, that the, the, 20 pieces? I the say devil's 30. had this. It's, it's 30. The devil, something 30. to the effect of it's the 30. devil's had this money long enough. It's time to. I like it. And I'm like. And the guy yeah. that I was arguing with was not arguing with because he was my boss. Uh, the guy, that, he was a contemporary of, of Pastor Johnson. Yeah. Like he's, I talk about sitting across the table from him and Pastor Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my pastor. Yeah. Mm. And, and pastor, like those So, so you're giants. saying, uh, and we talk about this kind of stuff all the time, in and of itself, money isn't good or bad. Exactly. I, 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 in my it. opinion. That's my opinion. Okay. I don't think. I, I think so how you, you don't it. care at all. I don't care. If, if another, so there's David Green who say what you want about him. That the, his other contemporary that donated fifty million to the ad campaign, that dude is a human trafficker, right? And well, that dude earned his money by hiring it's... coyotes to take. Well, then it would make me wonder the about his involvement and the agenda of the message. Itself. That's that's the distinction. So, so this that's is what the they're saying too. Right. So that so the detractors are saying if the money's dirty. Then what is their there real has message? to be an ulterior motive. What is their real yeah. message with this? And I've heard everything I can see from that. I can fascism see that, I mean. that they are promoting. That that dude the the stuff that's come out of the Christian world about how bad these at are is genuinely shocking. Well, me. I'm not saying necessarily for he gets us organization. Like, what's their agenda? I would say those who are don't the donors. I'd say, well, what's their agenda? Is it so, possible for people to share an agenda? So, like, growing up in you know mob crime family stuff. They supported the Catholic Church. Absolutely. They weren't trying to shape the Catholic Church. Yeah. They weren't trying to change the direction of the Catholic Church, yeah. but they gave a lot of money to it. And it's so there usually this, for two reasons, because I'm in the one same is boat. Guilt. So one is guilt trying yeah. to uh, redeem yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. The other is because they do see the organization of the Catholic Church as doing good Something in the community. Good. It's sure. true. It's so like, those are usually the two reasons. It's the, That's what it's, I saw in the It's Armenian the one percenters, it's the Hells Angels doing Toys for Tots. Yeah. It's the same idea. Like right. so should you question Toys for Tots because Hells Angels gets involved? So in again, it? going back to that original point and what you Perfect. were saying, yeah. I, I want to know what that do motives are cool put those aside for a second sure does it change your view of the campaign no okay it doesn't for me either. Doesn't for i you. don't think what jesus do think? I, I think if we looked at the jesus had a money pot right because we know judas helped himself to the money that they lived down while he was doing his ministry 
I think anybody who put money it's in such there. such a weird thought. Go it ahead. is. But it is, it is weird, right? Oh, right? So weird. It's so weird, right? But that he, is literally somebody in the church stealing from the church, mm-hmm. which we did have. Right. And and I said I was sorry. And a, he well, used to work here. That's right. But the fact that Jesus kept him on board the whole still time, still running the money, well, and still running the money. But that was he clearly knew it was he within knew. his character. What the heck, man? And, right. and, it was and, within his. It made sense. But and, it does it though, because it does. But what? Well, it made sense to Jesus. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know you're gonna do that. I know. And that is evidence of your character deep down. You don't have. They don't have full enough. But could faith. you imagine? Doing that. Could you imagine being in Jesus' shoes? We're running this ministry. Somebody that we know in um, our church no. is is skimming a little off the top. I, <laughs> what? Well, we and, got rid of them as fast as we could the moment we found out. I, I couldn't imagine myself doing that. I can imagine someone doing that because yeah. Gosh, it blows we're, my we're mind. traveling around. You know, I don't know when we're going to have our next meal. I don't know when we're going to be able to stay yeah. somewhere. You know, there's that that fear. So I, I'm going to rob from everybody's ability to have their next meal. Right. People do desperate times, man. I'm going to rob from the Messiah. Right. My happens, gosh. Anyway, okay. Happens, sorry. So, no, no, it's good. Hey. So I think the idea of what the money went in there to do, I think that's that doesn't make sense to care about that. To care if that person has sway in the direction of the agenda does make sense. I good. think that's a fair challenge yeah. to say like, well, if he's given $50 million, are you shaping the agenda yeah. to your largest donor? Every right. church, when the people talk about yep. we have like five major donors, are they shaping the gospel yeah. at your church? Because they're your five biggest donors, uh-huh. I don't think there's anything wrong with someone questioning that. Not I think either. then you should defend it and say no. In fact, like this is the message we would give. Show me how his agenda politically yeah. is showing up inside what we're doing. That's what that's the argument there. And I so. would, and I'm I'm hoping they have done this, and I have not looked enough into this specific aspect. But if but if I'm in their shoes. Uh, same with a, a church. I wouldn't need a signature in any way, but I would have something to where it's like, whatever you give, you have no strings attached anymore. Well, yes. and that's, that is the, like, you, you can speak into vision, but you don't chain, you don't sway the vision by your checkbook. You sway the vision by, you know, uh, aligning with the revelation that God is giving us. Yeah, and in okay. this scenario, because I, I could see that in a church of being like, you know, some of our largest donors are on the board, which mm-hmm. is what I like, by the way. Like, I enjoy right. people being bought in that are on the sure. board. Sure, sure. Um, and so they do have a voice, but they know full well because we've had these conversations. Right. You don't have any. You. Everybody gets an opinion whether you don't give or you, you give. You right. don't. You don't have more of an opinion based upon the the number of digits on your check. There's no more leverage. No. We know a guy, right? That had uh, that had somebody. I was going to uh, say offer him. I had a buddy of mine who wrote him a check for a early, large amount early on in his church. He was planting the church, and before he had much traction at all. A large donor came and sat before him, slid him a check that was huge, that basically he said could start the church on its own. And they slid him the check, and he was blown away and was like, thank you so much. This is amazing. And they said, okay, now all I want, and he said, stop right there. And he goes, I didn't let him finish the sentence. He said that we will never have that kind of relationship. And the guy's like, no, 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 you're right, you're right. I don't want to do that. And he goes, okay, thought it was fine. And that's when he said... But I need you to do this, this, and this, and I need you to teach this. And the guy, he tore the check up. Yeah. He tore, and I was like, that's pretty awesome. I would yeah. expect a, every pastor to tear up the check, that was, but I don't think they that all That was would. a shaping experience for me as a youth pastor when my pastor brought me in and he was telling me about, I don't remember why he was telling me this story. He goes, you know, I had a, a, my top donor come in and say, I was, he goes, I didn't wear a tie in the pulpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, he says, you didn't wear a tie in the pulpit. He goes, and he goes, you need to wear a tie in the pulpit. And he goes, otherwise, me and my giving is going elsewhere. And my pastor said, that was a shot across the bow. He's like, <laughs> it's a shot across the bow. My response as the youth pastor was, I'd grab that guy and I'd buy his collar and say, get out. Like, I'm, I don't want your money. There's I would no, choke him with his tie. Seriously. I would have like, cashed that guy's check first yeah. and then told him exactly. no. But I will say on the opposite end of that, as I was church planner in Chicago, and I have an uncle who's, you know, was involved with the mob. Um, and anyway, so I was just trying to raise some money for an event. I was just calling everybody I know, and, you know, yeah. all I have is family. So I call him up and say, hey, you know, we're doing this event at church to, to help charity and stuff like that. So do you have any, you know, money that you might be able to donate? And he goes, well, I got some TVs. 
I was like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> so I will say, I go, no, it's, I'm good. Out. I'm good. So there is this thing where you're like, Ugh. like the, even for me at the time, they're just TVs. But I thought, you, you know what? I, I don't, the, I don't, the TVs I don't are interesting. And that. I know this from experience because it's happened multiple times in my family. Uh, we've sold things that maybe I didn't know where they were from and then got a phone call from the police saying you sold stolen contraband. And we're like, uh, did I? And it's funny because I'm like, I didn't know, but maybe other people did know. Right. And when it comes to the product like that, yeah, I weird. actually steer very clear of those You could have gave me the money for the I've had and some, it would have been the same thing. So, But it's funny because with the money, I'm like, that's one removed. And maybe I'm wrong in that. But yeah. that is kind of like one removed to where I don't have to worry about there being backlash. Um so for you, it's not the issue; it's the backlash for the issue. Uh, well, that's uh, that's what sin is: is consequence. You know, like oh, the, the, other uh, this this with, the other part of this with the other part of this with David Green is oh, the other part that's more. Um, you know, I hate, we always say the word nuance, but it's more nuances. Ding. Can you have somebody who's aligned politically in an area that you don't agree with, but then is also aligned with you in an area that you do agree with? Sure. So like, so they're saying like, Hey, I have all these political views, but I also really love Jesus and I really love people and I want to help people know Jesus. Yeah. So I'm going to contribute money cause I care about this. And can you just be able to say, yeah, they're not asking me to support their political 100%. agenda, 100%. but they are, we are aligned here. Yeah. And so, cause again, David Green isn't murdering people, right? right he has right. political agenda that people don't like. Uh, in fact, David Green has done more for the preservation of the Bible than any single person on the planet. He has preserved, sought out, spent his own money to find the oldest manuscripts known. He owns the oldest manuscripts, a piece of John. Uh, and Is it all in the Museum of the Bible? Mm -hmm, he, yeah, he supported DC. it. Yeah, but he moved all that stuff over right, there. So, right. so there are areas where I'd say, yeah, maybe you're not aligned with him politically. But when it comes to some of the Bible stuff here, some of the stuff that David Green is doing is very good, and he does care about people. And he does care about the gospel. Yeah. So I actually know specifically of a, a big church uh, that was growing and really seen a lot of people get saved. He bought their building and sold it to them for a dollar. Doesn't go there. Doesn't attend the church. Not just just because they were doing such good things for the kingdom. Yeah. He gave it to him for a dollar. Can we send yeah. him an email? Yeah. yeah it's funny. When did I heard know, that, I did when email I heard him. that story. <laughs> I did email him. Really? When I planted a church in LA, I emailed him. Hilarious. Yep. I, I just heard that story yesterday or the day before. And I was like, is it wrong of me to want to reach out to him? Yeah. Because I actually thought, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like, am I crazy? I feel the same way in that I actually do have pause knowing where the money came from. So, if Fair. if an if an outspoken uh, Satanist was giving money to the church for, I'd be like, wait a minute. I I don't. I think I would probably still take the money, and maybe I'm wrong in that. Yeah. But because I'm like, I don't well, care at all. I think it comes back to what Joe said, though. They're not going to steer the agenda. Oh, and I would make that very clear. 100%. Well, and here's the reality: is okay. We can find David Green's political agenda. It's very easy. Three of the things that they showed on there were anti his agenda. It was a Planned Parenthood. It was immigration, and it was uh, a gay man. Yeah. And so if you look at his political agenda, talking about loving and serving those people would be against the agenda the guy has, yeah, right. according to what he's politically supported. Right. So now you're already saying, like, well, then clearly this guy is not steering the agenda because you look at with a product is against what he's saying sure. he believes politically. Okay, so yeah. that's point one. We're, we seem to be pretty clear on the we don't necessarily care that much about where that the donor's money came from. The second interesting one with that caveats. I've heard with, with caveats, caveats, exactly, yeah. that I heard quite a bit of was that they're, they're not sharing the gospel. That's not Jesus, because Jesus, in every scenario of the Bible, did not condone sin where, where most people that I listen to felt like this ad campaign was condoning the sins of a lot of those. Because if, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first few weren't sin. The first few were uh, oppressed people groups mm -hmm. or uh, disenfranchised people groups. Right. And then the latter ones were, were explicitly sin. And so in their view, it was a picture of Jesus that was condoning all the stuff that Jesus called sin. Amazing. And so is there any validity to that, that that's not the full gospel? Jesus called people to repentance. That video had nothing to do with repentance and and simply condoned the sin that was on there. I don't think the there. purpose of it was necessarily, I mean, Jesus mm -hmm. is the incarnate good news, 
but I think the purpose of it was to spur on conversation. I think the failing and the, for me, uh, it's kind of just more bummerness, maybe because I'm a four, mm. uh, is it's a, it's, it's a, a commercial about empathy, compassion, mm. humility, serving one another, um, regardless of if you're, you know, if you, it looked like there was a, whether mental illness or single mother, there was Native American, there are people who had different colored hair, people who were maybe in uh, different lifestyles as then heterosexual. Um, there were those in different vocations. And it says Jesus didn't hate. And despite that, it's, I think, uh, from my reading of that is, we're supposed, this message is to spur a conversation about Jesus and then lead you to reading the Gospels. As opposed, and look what's happening. We're not talking about Jesus. Okay. We're not talking about the Gospels. That's good. How about you, Floyd? I think what Joe said, too, in the beginning of this conversation was pretty powerful. I don't think that was a message to the world. I think that was a commercial for Christians. And I think that the, the message for me is you know, we are called to serve humanity. I, a long time ago, I was wrestling with uh, a situation, <clears throat> and I really felt the Holy Spirit say to me, your job is to love the people that I put in front of you, period. That's it. My job as a believer yeah. is to love the people that God puts in front of Absolutely. me. I, I, I'm, I keep thinking about the woman that was thrown at Jesus' feet, brought from the bed of adultery. And he said, where are your accusers? And then he said, neither do I continue, condemn you. Now go and be different. So, so they, uh, the detractors, used that exact same scripture mm. and Incorrectly. said... Oh. And said, "Go and sin no more." He he ended with "Go and sin no more." Right. They didn't put the "Go and sin no more" so that part, nothing worse may meaning happen. Meaning that it's blasphemous. Oh, interesting. That's that's what they said because it was consequential at the end of the "Go and sin no more," which was fascinating. People had that exactly. all the time. Exactly. So it's that a, it's, a, it's yeah. consequential. Yeah. That's yeah, but that's that can lead in, down that direction with literally any human, any depiction of a human. Right. Yeah. I I, I get what they're saying. Yeah. I can understand that. But we're, you know, and I know it's not biblical, love the sinner, hate the sin, but that's it's really, the, that's, it's, which by the way, is not in the Bible. It's not. That's, that's, what, he, that's no, what he said. Not. That's what he said. It's not. Biblical. Oh, I thought you were saying like, okay, sorry. Yeah. Conceptually, I think it's there. Though, right. right? right. Oh, yeah. concepts. And, but I mean, my problem is though, like there's plenty of concepts that we can derive from different scriptures. What I will say is but what's, what's lacking. Um, yeah, there's, maybe there's everyone is strong on admonishment and what is the true gospel and it's misrepresented. I do think there's a major lacking in, in grace and forgiveness. So yeah. they, they picked two scriptures and they brought them to a real life circumstance. They brought the, the good Samaritan that's in the second commercial and they brought the foot washing. They yeah. weren't, they weren't, they weren't leaning on any of the scripture in there. And the dynamic that's going on there are two things is Jesus condoning in the actual Bible uh, Judas is theft because he knew he was stealing. And is he condoning his betrayal because he knew he'd betray him? Is he condoning uh, Peter's denial of Christ? And so by washing someone's feet, are you then condoning their behavior? And oh. so in this exact concept of a representation of Jesus, they're using Jesus himself as the, as the analogy, which is you can wash the feet of people that you don't agree with, yeah, that sure. you even think what they're doing is wrong. And so, and, or what they're going to do is wrong. And so they literally mirrored one scripture by this illustration. So when people say that, I'm like, stick with the analogy, mm -hmm. stick with the actual passage they're using. And you would say, no, then that's right on. My, my, I think my biggest frustration and pushback with that argument that it wasn't the complete gospel is that when, like, do you personally always give the complete picture of Jesus? Or when you preach as a pastor or any of these people with platforms, is every one of your podcasts and every, one, every time you talk about Jesus, do you give every one of his personality traits? Right. Do you talk about every full aspect of, because he parables, said some very controversial do things. Do the parables completely teach the kingdom? Or do you pick one thing to teach from? Right. And I feel like they picked, I feel like the, the, he gets his campaign, picked something that would hit multiple different people yeah. and different walks of life. And what's so interesting is how successful the campaign was. Mm -hmm. So they say, which I find interesting that you even brought this up, they, there are, man, I'm doing real well with this. They actually say it up. The, the, the purpose of the campaign was to start conversations about Jesus. That's the same to parent. And it's funny because everyone else is like, but it doesn't give the full gospel. And they were like, it wasn't our 
goal. It's, Our goal it's a was topical to, sermon. Right. And it was a topical sermon, and here's what's crazy. Every time somebody – so the initial one was uh, AOC, the, the congresswoman, correct? Senator. Uh, Senator, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, she tweeted about it and said something about, like, the fascist agenda of the right type thing. Mm. Uh, right after she tweeted that, something near a million people visited their the website, the He Gets Us website, immediately. Wow. And she's obviously a non-Christian. She's an atheist from what I know. Uh, then a Christian, and I can't remember which one, but a pretty predominant Christian, tweeted something that was also very negative, that it was the incomplete gospel, something to that effect. Same exact thing happened. A ton of people, roughly a million people, went and visited. So both sides hating it is still getting the effect that they wanted, which was, we just want to start a conversation. about. Even if you think this is wrong, mm. talk about why you think it's wrong. And yeah, it's right. that's exactly what's happening. So I'm kind of like, so and, they won. and their Touché. website's fantastic, by the way. So their you're being led great. to their, yeah. their website. You want to know more about Jesus? Their website it's has there. it. Yeah. And I actually love the way they word the stuff on their website. It's very well thought out. It's not flippantly just, oh, we love Jesus. You should... It's very clear as yeah. to where they stand. It's very concise. Let, let me bring in another one that I thought was interesting uh -huh. that I read today. It might be on your list. Um, was, is this the best use of $100 million? Yeah, that was, that the, was on there. That's the big critique that someone said, like, you, you, you don't get Jesus. So Because so he wouldn't have spent that money the, on The specific on one was that they spent 14 to $20 million yes. on the Super Bowl. On the commercials explicitly. themselves. Like just on Would, the ad. And the, the, the critique is... Would would fourteen to twenty million dollars be better? Wouldn't it be better spent if it was spent on, let's say, homelessness? Right. I, I read serving that, the poor. Uh, I read that MSNBC and they used all the things that it could have helped, all the different areas. I I agree in one sense, but in the in perpetuity or in the long term, uh, bringing that many more people to their organization. What, what, what good can you do with $500 million, you know? Right. So I don't think it's – people are so focused on well, what right, right now. Like what – no, this is – listen, our organization has this whole plan, and it is to do good as we're called by, by Jesus. But you guys, can you get an ad at the Super Bowl? How are you going to that, reach that many people? You know, this is the Great Commission, and yeah. we're living in the in the new How many age. Hundreds of millions. I I, I forgot yeah. what it's that it's was, it's it was astrophical. Uh, an we are living in, the, in a major new age, and guess what? None of us in the organization, our faces aren't there. We're not doing it for vain reasons or whatever. At least that I know of. I was actually some weird thought was like, if I'm donating, like I'm a donor, you know, like I'll offer you guys twenty five million. Uh, my grandfather's a handsome guy. And I know that's like, you know, you talk through like what the commercial might be. Can you get him in the commercial? I can understand that practice. Like, that's funny. Yeah. That, I could see how that's something. But, um, but in the matter of the, the one thing that's kind of, I agree that yes, it is calling Christians um, in regards to and in changing their ways and they're in living hatefully. Um, I, I disagree that it isn't for those. I, I can't imagine they weren't so intentional oh, I think with the imagery. I right. disagree that it was just for Christians. Yeah, I agree. Because I do believe that when people go, they see that cringy. Oh, well, you know, I've thought things, I've had the Lord in my heart for a long time. Yeah. When I hear worship, certain worship songs or see a certain Christian movie, I cringe because the values might be represented in a way that I don't understand. What do you mean Jesus doesn't teach hate? Only people who I know who follow Jesus are hateful. Right. So it is going to call those who are, might feel outside, who might feel like the people who do follow Jesus are holier than thou. And so then it might will spur on conversation or for people to use their brains and their the digital age yeah. now to access the gospel and realize in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for his good. So yeah, this commercial might be, maybe it is funded by bad people. But I can't imagine that it's not going to work together for God's good. And we're going to talk a little bit about well like uh, whether this was for Christians or not, based on the characters and then the roles they played in the commercial. We'll get to that in, yeah. second, in the next part yeah. of this. Sure. Uh, so, what about the poor? So, what's is should, this? Should they have 14 used this million, money? Fourteen to twenty-one million to do something 
tangibly better. And in let's say. fairness, what they, they did feed the, they did sponsor an event with a local nonprofit in Las Vegas and partner with the University of Nevada, and they handed out food and, so, and medical so, free medical so care. So the the while pushback is not that they don't do anything good with the money with their money. Right. It's that this specific amount of money, let's just this say wasn't fourteen the best million, use. Yep. that they spent this fourteen yep. million on ninety seconds of ads yep. versus. That fourteen million going to multiple homeless shelters and yep. doing I mean, cause cause really, if you think about what you could do with fourteen million to actually change people's lives physically. <laughs> I no no, no for, I'm I'm, I'm only moment. saying I, so uh, so so flesh that out then. Because right? that I this think is, is what the I think uh, for me, I see this as this is the long game. And I think it, it's what Josh was saying or allu- at least alluding to in my view, this is the long game. You can, yeah, we can, we can take $14 million and take everybody in the country out to brunch. Great. We oh, fed I'm, them I'm for in. a meal. Could we do that? Let's right? do that. We, we fed them, we great. fed them a That's meal. a lot of mimosas. <laughs> but, but if we take that $14 million and it now rolls over again and again and again and again by hundreds of millions of people that see it, Millions of people visiting their website. If they capture one percent in donors, then the perpetual mm. return on the fourteen million dollar investment That's interesting. could yeah. be. I didn't think you're going there. Massive. I didn't either. So I had a different take, which I think Joe is yeah. Joe is uh, you, thinking. You, also, you and yeah, Joe have the same I've been take? stealing your take. So no, take no, no, this. no. It's it's that I was thinking the exact same thing, except for the return that I was thinking had nothing to do right. with physical or financial. It was the return was. Uh, that people meet Jesus. Sure. You, you, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world? What good is it to right. feed millions of people or even get people off the street? What good is that if they do not if know Jesus, Jesus at the end of the right. day? And I, and I agree with the argument that they're not going to hear until you feed them and clothe them and what you did to the least of these you've also done for me. I believe that's also a thing. I think the problem that we're having is we see an organization whose goal is to start conversations about Jesus and lead people to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I hear a bunch of people saying, but I think you should be about feeding the poor. And they're like, that's not our mission statement. Maybe that because you should be feeding the poor. Yeah. And I do, my heart goes out to them because I'm like, they have a clear vision that they are trying to go after. And, and other people are saying, well, we think your vision should be different. And I'm like, well, well we're trying to you get, have your vision. Be exactly. Different. We're trying to get that vision into 100,000 people at one time. And right. again, it's to start conversations and lead people to Christ. Again, they're also feeding the poor. They're right. also doing right. that's a that's a byproduct of people getting saved. Yeah. Right. Like and our so, lives are yeah. changed. Like their goal is to lead, to lead reach people, people to Christ. Christ. Yeah. Right. And then to. Those people that are reached for Christ now, now your goal is based upon the thing that led you to Christ is to serve humanity. Yeah, I think <clears throat> like, you know, in the argument of Jesus fed the crowds because not only their faith, but he had compassion for them. So maybe there are people who are saying that, like you're mm. saying, Jesus doesn't teach hate, but I don't sense much com- compassion from you guys. Good imagery, but where's the compassion for the poor? So I can understand that. But that's so weird because but it's you so, can easily go, here's all our compassion but also. Oh, and I don't know what else yeah. he, he gets us does, but I'm sure it's not just the yeah. commercial. You need to do really good things to get the attention of donors. But that's why I'm saying it, it is kind of, I don't know why... Um, coveting jealousy is popping in my head ah, right now. Ah, I think so you're nailing it. I'm, for me, when I think of that argument, I go, okay, you and I are arguing about this. Yeah, yeah, you're making good points. Yeah, we're, are, we have the freedom to argue about this in public here in the U.S. Yeah, and the average income, whether you're, you know, lower middle class income, you're looking between, what, twenty five and $45,000. I don't know. That might be high. I don't know. But that is in the 1% of the world. We're the 1% wealth highest wealth in the world, what are you doing with your money? And think about it. If you had a hundred people, a thousand people in your community, you can go out, you got a phone, you got a tablet, you got your laptop, you got your mouth. You can connect with people and you can get people to donate. You can get, you, you could do the same. So I'm not trying to, I don't like fighting a fire with fire necessarily, but I'm, I, the place where that's coming from go, mm-hmm. well, yeah, but I don't have that much. Right. Like, Oh, no, so I, I think you are mm. nailing something that I think is probably the most unpopular opinion we will share. And it's that I sense a lot of 
jealousy as well in that how come they got this much and I like we're mad more that they have as much as they have than we are with the message that they're sharing. I think mm. there's a there's there's a lot of validity to that and that is yeah. very I know that's gross but I'm like I, it's real. It that's... seems so accurate. I, don't I, know. I think it's I think it's I think the bottom line is is that you have different value statements from this group to the rest of the world. They value eternal life in Christ above all else. They sure do. They and seem so like they do. That's, that's what they care about. So their, their ROI for them is not someone fed physically. It's someone fed spiritually. Mm. So for them to see lives change for Christ, even if it has a byproduct of the world is better and people are better, they're looking at a kingdom mindset about more people will know Jesus. And they would say less people are going to hell. That's that's their perspective. Mm -hmm. And saying less people are going to hell, more people are going to heaven, mm -hmm. and they know Jesus. And to them, they're doing the ultimate mercy in their mind is by leading people to Christ. Right. And I thought it was fascinating because, again, I think they've done a good job. There's another picture of this in Scripture. Uh, and it is the woman who is uh, the sinful woman who, uh, the prostitute who actually opens up a jar of perfume and mm. she pours it over Jesus's head. Yeah. And they said, that's a year's wage. And one person says that should be better off. It was going to the poor. That one person was Judas. Mm. That's the person who critiqued Ooh, the idea. Was it? Yeah, yep. it was. The person was. who critiqued the idea mm -hmm. that you are fe you're not feeding the poor but instead you are using this on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so here we have that same argument from believers. I said, you're, you're emulating Judas in this scenario. I would you feel so mm -hmm. convicted right now if I was yeah. one of yeah, those. That's, that's the camp you chose. Wow. Glad I didn't, yep. glad I didn't, you know, bash on him. Yeah. Well, I think what's <laughs> funny is I do think <laughs> there is validity to every one of their frustrations. Totally. However, I think, I think you nailed it when you're like, I, it doesn't seem to be coming from a good place. It's a worldly frustration. It, it's, and theirs. And it feels like I might be totally wrong. They're, they're like, not even a little bit. But it does kind of seem like, why do they get this massive platform? And that's how they use it. And I, we have this thing in us. We, we all do this. We would have done it better. It's oh, like yeah, when, when right. you read Genesis and you look at Adam and you're like, oh, if I were there, I wouldn't have eaten the apple. And I'm like, Adam was the best of us. It literally says he was the best of us. And he made that fall. You would make that fall. You currently, with Christ, make these same mistakes, if over not more. Over and over and over again. So it's so insane of us to think that we would do it so much better. And I'm like, mm -hmm. are you handling your current life better? Forget about if you had yeah. that much more. Yeah. And I just think there, there's, I, I don't know, man, we, like how we don't see that and feel even an ounce of conviction of yeah. the, are we treating the least of these the way we should be? Yeah. How that doesn't come across. There's so many instances of that. Be. Actually, what came to my mind was what we talked about recently uh, was the, the story of the withered hand. He heals his hand and forgives the man. Both of those things really weren't the de the issue for the Pharisees. There was, it was them, him doing that doing on, on Sabbath. The Sabbath yeah. It was, it was obeying the law and it's, it, it's interesting how he's You're like, right. yeah, but that's the law. First of all, he says that he's, the, he frees us from the law, but that's another thing on the side. It's so much more important to forgive this man, to change his heart. Yeah. Yep. And, and he still healed him. And yeah. this, this smacks of that so much that it's like, I feel like we're just focused on the wrong thing. It's a message well, of good. humility. You're mad that they, that they did this during the Super Bowl and it cost a lot. Right. You're mad that he healed on the Sabbath. Which I could, I could it get just that. Feels this, but it doesn't, it feel the same. Like you're mad at the, at the things that it wasn't meant to do. Right. You, right. You're focused on the wrong thing. It's the same as the Pharisees. And I'm not calling anyone who speaks out against this Pharisees. At I all. am, <laughs> but but there is such a, it just, it rings of that so much where you're like, wait, you're looking at the wrong stuff. You're mad that this was done on the Super Bowl. You're mad that they spent so much money on this. You're mad that he healed on the Sabbath right. because it's not the way that you want it. Right. Does God ever do things the way you want them to be done? Yeah. My, in a conversation, I'd love to sit with someone and, and talk with them about it and go like, okay, uh, did you watch the Super Bowl? Yeah. Do you enjoy the commercials typically? Yeah, they're not, for me, I love the commercials. They kind of fell flat this year. So There's a couple flat. of them. These were um, literally the best commercials in, of the essence, Super Bowl, in my opinion. In essence, individually and good. then collectively. The ones we're speaking of. Commercials, he gets us. We're the yeah. best commercials. Commercials would not exist without viewership. 
That's the whole purpose of them. That's why there's so much. There, it's uh, there's the quality over quantity. There's a lot of commercials, but it's you have to put so much in in order to get one spot, whether it be thirty seconds or a minute. And so I, I my question to them would be, okay, so if you don't support it, you still are, you're still watching it. So let's say we gifted you two hundred million dollars. What would your message be? This this money is for message or. If I gave you that money and had gave you an opportunity, you can have an ad in the Super Bowl, or you can do that, do some good. Ooh, I actually, that's a fun uh, thought exercise. Is if you had to do like a, a would you rather? No, if you had to do a commercial during the Super Bowl, what would you? What, what would, would your it message be? be? It would be he doesn't he teaches love. That's interesting. It was they they nailed it. So it'd be now I'm like I don't even know because like because what they I thought they, what they did was so good. They did I'm like, like, they did commercials so during all the major sporting events this year, right? Like They've the done on ESPN. It's, yes. a, it's been their whole thing is a marketing campaign. I think the first yeah. I so saw whenever people are talking like why aren't they spending money on the poor, I'm like they're a marketing group. They, yeah, they're doing this for the, one. They're purpose. literally trying to get people to meet Jesus. All right, let's shift gears uh, and the one of the ones forever. We could talk about it. We're still on the topic, but I wanted to shift to one more. More challenge that I you thought know what was you should shift to is that my cigar started to burn weird, and I don't think it's because I dropped it nine times. Yeah, it's probably not. It's probably <laughs> uh, really well. This is fantastic. It's really good. Very oh, last. Great. So yeah, good. Mine was phenomenal I'm, all the way I down. Mine Thank you, Clay. I'm Clay. Yeah. Seriously, Aiken. very good. These really are good. awesome. It's really good. Great job. All right, so there might be more on Ryan's list. This is the last one I thought was interesting, and it was specifically from the guy in, uh, who heads up the Babylon Bee. His comment was. If they really wanted to shake things up, right? If they okay. really wanted to put a culture shock, why wasn't it? And I believe this is the imagery he oh, used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why wasn't it a young black man washing the feet of a police officer? So it basically felt like yeah. um, that's good. That they, he, the agenda was he all went anti-conservative. Yeah. Versus going anti-liberal. That's exactly right. Yeah, so yeah, they said right. it felt like it was all on the the left side, right? So all the people, the people who you know, typically considered more conservative, we're washing the feet of the people who would be more on the liberal agenda or the woke agenda, as someone would say. So uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about why they did it that way? Was that right? Was that wrong? Should it have been opposite? Should it have been flip-flopped? What, what, what's your take on all that? Hmm. Did they use the same person washing the feet in no. every shot no it was no. different every it was time different so it was time. different every it was time. literally people at odds in each shot it's yeah. whoever you would picture would be it against was each other at odds okay so what, what do you guys, guys think why wouldn't you do that i think it i was, mean why why do you think they did that or you know yeah or is, is or there is that valid at matter? all yeah would, uh, yeah was I, that the case i i don't know i don't i think that for me and this is personally for me even with us uh, I'm not politically minded. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I can understand if I am and go, well, this, this is, seems apparent to me. And I get that. I think for me, I like maybe ignorance is bliss in this sense, but not necessarily. Um, I just, I see, I see people, I see God's children. I see humanity. You don't see the, color. The essence. Um, I don't. There's a um, lot the, of jokes there the, that I'm The essence of, of the washing of feet is it takes humility on both parts, not just the person that's washing. A take. Oh, that's a good point. So I, uh, it's a great point because if you've ever had your feet washed, it's I, uncomfortable. I would ticklish. rather wash someone's feet a thousand times over. I agree. Having your feet washed is the and weirdest, feet. most humbling. It uh, for both. Whew. And I, it's, it's moving. Mm -hmm. And there's this idea that, by the way, you're washing. You are now clean. You're walking on holy ground. So I think that's why I do feel it is very strong for people who don't yet have Jesus in their heart or in community with people who are Christians because there's this idea that, oh, when you're attacking my sin, I still feel like you're attacking my character and my freedom and my, the, who I choose to love. It's like, hey, all of those factors that you've just you've brought up are all God-given, and they're all preached very strongly that, they, that, that speak into your value. So I, I get, I understand the lens of the political view, and maybe it was, maybe, and if, and actually that's a great point. I'm like, yeah, they didn't have that in the commercial of a black man washing a cop's feet. Um, maybe next commercial, but I think it would have spoken the same message. I really do for me because I'm not political. Okay, but, yeah, that's good. I, I had that same. I didn't notice it. 
when I first I, saw it. Until the Babylon B guy said it? I, I didn't it. see it either. I, yeah. I didn't, even, didn't even cross my mind. It's funny because after I, I read the Babylon B guy, I actually, my thought was like, oh, that would have been good. Yeah. And not, not because it's political, just because it's another layer. It's another layer. And I'm like, well, now it, that I've thought about it, I could probably pick 15 other people washing other people's feet that I yeah. didn't see. And I'm like, they only had the 60 seconds. Right. Darn you, it. you have to, you have to choose at some yeah. point. And is the choice, and so, like, is, is something too political? And I, I wonder. It skews the view of the, of the ad overall. And yeah. I, I didn't see it as political at all. I didn't so either. But I, I wonder if a, they did. I right. wonder if in creating it, they went after the the more conservative bend. I, I wonder. I, I don't know. If I were to pick the thing that united all the images, it was typically the person who was angry at the other person. Yeah. So if you don't like the idea yeah. that they pick people that you normally align with conservatively, mm -hmm. there's no arguing that that's the angrier group. Like that's what we're seeing in in. And yeah, polit good. politics, that's, that's how we're seeing it. Yeah. And so they picked the, the angriest side, and I'm, both sides are angry, but they picked the angriest side and said, wash the other person's feet. Yeah. And so that's where I saw it as kind of a message to not just the world, but to Christians, but also specifically like this group has been angry at this group, yeah. right? If we're being honest, the priest at the end washing the feet of the gay guy, that has been more of a war. It's become a war yeah. against each other, but it's been more the war of the church against the LGBTQ community. Right. And so they picked them. Whoever's more angry traditionally is the one that did the washing of the feet. And so that was the uniting because right. the message was Jesus didn't teach hate. So they picked angry people who would normally be angry and they asked them to wash the feet. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, any closing thoughts on it? I feel I, I have no I have kidding. one thought on anything you, else you want to say about the campaign. He gets us the the backlash. Anything at all um, to close out this thought? Because I I think we could talk about this forever. I think we should. I think this should actually have a lot of because this probably is the most oh, funded. Nice most successful campaign, whether you agree with it or not. At least Nor modern day. Christian. Um, <laughs> that I've seen. So I think it actually does merit some conversation. And sure. anytime you talk about Jesus is good. So right. I'm like, so I don't mind. So do you have any like last thoughts, even if it's a reiteration of something you think is important about it? Mm. Right. Thanks think for joining us. Nothing that's like poignant or, or we no. did we did talk it pretty good. I'm Floyd. Yeah. I would say <laughs> we're gonna we have to end with a, a pal cleanser. Gotta yeah. do a, some oh, yeah, for sure. Uh I would just reiterate again after talking it all out again that I thought it was fantastic. Good. That'd mm -hmm. be my last take. I, you yeah. know, I they're brave. I think they're they're oh, that's good. they're brave and they're set apart. Uh, you're right. I think they, they have put themselves out there in a unique way that I think a lot of people with the platforms, and I, I'm really not bagging on anybody because I think everyone had valid points. I think it's good that they're talking about it. And even people with decent-sized platforms, you know, I watch guys with like half a million subscribers, which is quite a bit, a million subscribers. Um, they have their, their audience, and they think they're speaking boldly. And oftentimes, I'm like, you, you are. You think you're doing a great job. You're probably speaking to your audience. Right. This was like a, we're speaking to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we are putting this out there knowing full well this is going to go badly at times. Right. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I think they are brave. That's good. I point. would say my thought would just be, it's a win, man. Because the goal is to start conversations and, and look around. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I think, um, I think one of the coolest things that, that the good takeaway is that washing someone's feet does not condone any of their actions. It's good. And so take that, take that with you and remember, like when you watch stuff like this, like that wasn't the message and you're probably misinterpreting it just mm. simply that he washed someone's feet. He didn't, that wasn't a condoning of anything mm -hmm. that they did. Right. That is really good. That was showing that he loves them. That's yeah. what good. that was. Yeah. Wow. All right. What do we All got? Right. Let's do, let's do something fun. A couple fun. of palate cleansers and we'll, yeah. moving on. Uh, sorry, I'm on. I'm on the Rock Harbor to-dos. Yeah, no problem. Um, would you rather hear... Um, would you rather... <laughs> run? Oh, run out of food. Never run out of food or never run out of gas? Those are the only... There's there's like four before would that you, one. 
No, this isn't. There, there was one before it. What time period would you live in? Has got to be over 100 years ago. Oh. Cannot be during Jesus or the early church. I, ha- I, I had, added that one. Yeah, I, I added it. Uh, I think there's more, too. Uh, that but was the only five, one. There's five on there. That's weird. Anyway, uh, if you had to choose a different time period to live in in the past, okay, has to be over, like, a couple hundred years. So it's got to be past, past. And it can't be like Jesus or the early church. I think those are givens for Christians. When, when's, when was a good time to live other than now? A good time? That's going to be more challenging. Like, what would be a fun time? Oh, yeah, what would be? What would be interesting to see? I don't know. I think about, like, the early colonial days watching the birth of America. Or I think about, like, uh, you know, gladiator days, seeing being able to witness some of that. I mean, some of that kind of stuff sounds fun to me. Okay. But. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that it was good. You yeah. die. You die it young. It was future or past, right? It was only past. Oh, only past. Because I, I it, the, this stemmed from the realization of, uh, of that as much as we don't like the way things are going and as much complaining as I hear, gosh, dang it, I can't think of a better time to live. Better time in human history. I can't. Yeah. And so it made me think, I'm like, man, we complain a lot. When I think we have it, it's interesting that we complain so much when we I feel like we have it the best. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, is there a time any, that you? I don't live in any era where colds can kill me. Like I, basically, medical advancements is pretty oh. much dictating. A cavity, you're yeah. as good as dead. So yeah. is it how? Is there is there a limit on how far back I have to go? It has or? to be at least two hundred years. It has to be at what? least two hundred years. Oh, no, you said a hundred. I had my 200. answer. Two hundred. Oh, so man. pre pre America. Yeah. Uh. No, America's still here. <laughs> yeah. oh, America, was, America was here. Seventeen seventy-six. Oh yeah, right? that's two hundred and fifty years. Sorry, before, yeah. yeah. So oh, early, early days. Seven, that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah, but would that was that even good early no. America? Gosh, damn. Well, I mean, that's what no. I mean. Like there would be some fun aspects of it, watching the rise of a nation, but then you're dying from a cavity, like well, you said. Like, you're basically asking me where do I want to die young? Yeah, that's your yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. do I want to die? Well, young? Get there, and you'd be you'd already be dead right. at fifty. It was right. written a hundred years. And basically, if I'm like, and if I live to say I live to eighty, which I probably wouldn't there, at some point there, I'm going to war wherever I'm at. In the past. Probably true. I'm involved in some sort of a war. Probably true. So, yeah. Where do I want to die young is the question. It's crazy, right? Right. That's such an so interesting Italy, thought to me. Good food. I'll die young oh. eating good food. It, good food? In Italy? I think so. Yeah. So Italy's got great food. There's a, a colonial, American colonial no, food. <laughs> there's an American colonial food where it's just a baked onion. Mm-hmm. Looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, it said 100 years, and so I thought, oh, okay. 1903 is when flight was invented. Oh, the right, yeah, when the Wright brothers fun. first flew yeah. their Kitty Hawk. So I was like, that'd be fun to be there. Like, that would have been... Do you want to be Korean in 1903? Oh, that's oh. pretty good. Was Korea around? Yeah. No, sure. be Korean in America in 1903. I mean, no. Yeah. But... I don't want to be yeah, Italian. Me. I don't want to be Italian hey, hey, in 1903 hey, in America. If you're going to die young because of natural causes, what's right. the difference if I die young of whatever <laughs> cause? Yeah, know? of racism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be with Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I, it was it was it was a fun thought experiment based on we just have it so good. I can't yeah. Even, yeah. We complain a lot for I'm the thinking best of time. inventions. I don't know why my brain's going to like fun inventions. Oh, I like but, it, but there's like industrial revolution. No, I mean yeah, that was like hard. textile sewing machine. Yeah, I think the sewing machine was the printing press. I think the, the sewing machine was eighteen hundreds. Was a yeah. hard time, right? I so I'm like, like yeah. but that would have been cool. Yeah, like to see a you know a steam powered. You know, transport, I even like when people are like, oh, locomotive. I want to live, I want to live during now. the time of Jesus. I'm like, yes. it was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible. It was pretty yeah. horrible. I, it's, the, it's the old Nate Bargetzi. Uh, if he were a time traveler and he went back in time, even if he had a cell phone with him, they'd be, he'd show it to people and they'd be like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. And he, they're like, how's it work? He's like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and he <laughs> said even, really even if he, went, he couldn't even advance society, he said even it. if he went back in time, he wouldn't be able to prove Plus, it. He better have a full battery. He's yeah. like, I'm a time traveler. They're like, Oh, really? Why? Like, Oh, I can't. I can't wait, I can't prove that wait a minute. Look at this shirt. When was Nikolai Tesla alive, dude? So that might be the best one because I'd be like, I would, I would shut everyone else up. I would and like bring the blueprints back, make him better, and be the, like, the No, tower. you guys gotta listen to this guy. Yeah, I know. He's got. It, it oh. didn't turn out well for him. Do you know about the tower? He he, yeah. he uh, yeah. theorized the power tower, the power tower, power whatever tower. it was called. I'd take those blueprints back, and then bring them back here. All right, what's another one? Man, um, you said there's like a bunch. They're there's below. Only... They're below. Oh. I thought it was above it. Um, would you oh. rather play a game of checkers for a million dollars or a game of Mario Kart? 
Oh, shoot. It's kind of more like, what do you think you could win at? Mario Kart. Yeah. I have a better chance at Mario Kart than I would at Checkers. It's funny. I think I have a better chance at Checkers. Really? Yeah. I'm not an amazing Mario. I, I didn't play that much Mario Kart. I'm not amazing at it either, but I feel like I feel like Checkers, I get, checkers and I get Mario bamboozled Kart are all very the time. Different. Somebody's very doing like a nine a nine move. Pop, 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 yeah. take By the way, like uh, Grand, what do they call them? Grandmasters? Oh, sorry. Grandmasters? Chess. Grand Theft Auto. And chess that in checkers is don't even make millions of dollars in their tournaments. Yeah. So that's like, no. if you're putting me in that, I'm facing... Everyone who's the best. And the amount, I was kind of shocked by, there's a couple of great YouTube channels where like really high scoring chess, you know, they have that grading system. Yeah. Mm. We'll go on the streets of New York and it's like half Ooh. the, n- n- most of the people they play are like people that just play oh, on the street. Oh, but there'll be one or two people. And this, this girl who's this crazy high ranking uh, chess player sits down with this guy and just in conversation, and she always pretends like she doesn't know what she's doing a little bit and to just surprise everybody. And she sits down and she's like, so what's your rating? And he's like, oh, I'm a grandmaster. What? What? And they play. She can't beat him. <gasps> she's like a professional. And this is just a random dude in New York who happens to be a grandmaster. That's just amazing. hanging out playing they, at the park. They stalemate one match. And she is like, I w- that's me winning. Like, yeah, I yeah. can't believe I that's just amazing. stalemated. It was the coolest thing. Because awesome. I'm like. See, I, then that's the satisfaction in that. I wouldn't need yeah. the Million dollars is great. But it's like, I have a brilliant mind. If all of us had to play. <sighs> Each other for Mario Kart for a million dollars. Who's winning? Just curious. I mean, Josh, Josh. right out of the game. I go Josh. Yeah. If all of us had to play checkers for a million dollars, who's winning? Mm, Floyd. It's, yeah, it's really? Floyd? Yeah, it's not me. I think he's a sneaky checkers I player. think I would go to the semifinals. Okay. Yeah. I know it's not. Neither. I'm not a great games player. I, so. I, I'm decent at checkers, but I also think checkers is the dumb, kind of the a simple dope. dumb. Yeah, I think, <laughs> the, I'm terrible at chess. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I was oh, thinking chess this chess. entire time. I'm trying uh, to learn chess. I was saying chess it's really? checkers. I was literally picturing chess oh, in my no, brain. I go Mario Kart. I'll, I'm ter- I, chess is rough for me. Oh. Chess is hard. I it's always think game. I'm like, okay, I'm seeing three moves ahead, and then they do something, and I go, oh, no, oh, no that wasn't that. what I was thinking. <laughs> the, the, the satisfaction of getting, like, a double hop, like, you know, yeah. I do, right. I do love in, in chess, it's like you can have a, like a mind to be great at it, and then you still have to learn it. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you could be brilliant, but like, no, yeah. there's still moves to learn. My biggest frustration about chess that I, because I, I end up watching it, and I'm not, like I said, not good at it. And I'm frustrated. At, it's like a Rubik's Cube. I've, I've heard a lot of the people talking like it's not free. It's not very much free thinking no, anymore. No, no. They have planned moves. And I'm it's like, a, well, that's it's not It's basically whoever has, yeah. whoever has the, the, the depth of, uh, of algorithms and knowledge. Yeah. And they're trying to force you into the, moves. The, the, yeah, I don't the like freedom that. is combating moves. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically, it's almost like, that's why I say Rubik's Cube. You give some, there's algorithms. Yeah. They just follow based on where positions are. Yeah. I've always so. wanted to learn to do that because it, it, apparently it's not that hard once you get like the, if you do this kind of same thing. I don't have a good enough get, memory for I'm it. I'm always though. like, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. 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 I think the fun right. part about chess is that being able, like the the ones that are really great at it, are able to identify the strategies and have ways to defeat them. Yeah, yeah. seventeen right. moves ahead. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. not. Well, they say three. All right, good. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today, and you won't fun. hate it. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. I'm Joe.